Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is the last action hero, Dan Ryan. Aw, oh, love that. Thank you. October is already coming to a close, and that means it's time for Dan and I to attack this month's 10, 20, 30, 40 with vicious aplomb. Did any worthwhile mm. games come out 10, 20, 30, or 40 years ago this month? Keep a tight grip on your wonder seeds, because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast <laughs> starts now. <laughs> That's the only way I record the podcast. It's very Al Bundy <laughs> over here. Tight grip on the wonder seats. Hi, everyone. This is episode 486. It's the week of October 27th, 2023. And Dan, I've been having a really, I've been having a pretty good week over here. That's good. All right, let, but lay it on me. What so Monday, Monday, this is, this is going to be like the fourth time I've told this story this week. And I don't care because it's amazing. No, it's fine. Uh, it's a good Monday, story. Monday. A bunch of friends and I got to go see The State, MTV's The State, live and in person on stage uh, at the Palladium Square, uh, Palladium Theater in Times Square, which is the same building that they recorded The State in in the first place. Uh, and the show was outstanding. It was, uh, it was most of the members of The State. The only ones missing were Todd, Mike Showalter, and Ben Garrett. Uh, everybody else was there, and nice. it was hysterical they did a bunch of old stuff they did a handful of new sketches which this one in particular i feel like you would have loved it was uh kevin allison uh came out in like a coach's uniform and uh talking to football players about first yeah. how bad they were but then how good they <laughs> how good they looked particularly how good their asses looked in their pants <laughs> and then continued to go on just i mean well, it was raunchy to the degree that maybe even you would have blushed <laughs> of how that good is an interesting challenge. <laughs> there was me. one point where he's like, you see this beard on my face? Consider it your runway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and he love was everything just about that. going on and on and on. I mean, it must have been like five solid minutes of just the raunchiest discussions about how many terrible things he wanted to do to these players asses uh, all dressed up as a coach five, and then he's five minutes of filth and then he's like now look i know i'm not your coach <laughs> <laughs> i know you've never seen me before but let me tell you <laughs> it's just a chef kiss way of ending that sketch i just killed me but what That's was fantastic. super fascinating before that um, so I get there and one of my friends goes to go use to use the bathroom and a couple of my other friends go to get in the merch line. Now the state merch is not a thing that exists, right? It's, right. MTV has a vice grip on that property and they don't get to do because much with why it. Not? <laughs> Cause yeah. why not? With yeah. that, uh, with the exception of the DVD set that released a few years back, which very unfortunately was missing all the licensed music, which is like right. really, really sucks a lot of the air out of the balloon and in, in those, uh, in in many of those sketches, they're still very funny, but they're missing. Like they were clearly designed with this music in mind. Um, well, yeah, you wrote the sketch around this this gimmick, and then you take the gimmick away, and it's like, well, it still kind of works. Yeah, like you know the the what's his name the uh, the the kindergartner undercover thing. Like <laughs> that works. Just it's still very funny with like yeah. the generic music in the background, but it just yeah. works so much better with all the smashing pumpkins music in the background, you know? But yeah. <laughs> so I get in line for the merch and I was like, all right, I'm going to spend $35 on a fucking t-shirt because when am I going to have a chance to buy another, the state t-shirt, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm waiting in line. Um, like my other friends are like five or six people ahead of me in line. And I'm just waiting in the back of the line, and this girl comes up behind me, and, and she's like, is this the line for the merch or the line to get in the theater? I said, I have no idea. I hope it's for merch, because that's what I'm here for. And the two of us <laughs> struck up a conversation, because I talk to strangers. It's what I do. Yeah, and, uh, me too. <laughs> we started uh, just quoting the state and having a jolly old time. Then we started talking about the DVD sets and how it was great that they existed, but we were sad that the music wasn't in the episodes anymore. And uh, then we started quoting all the episodes that had the 
music that we really liked in it and that how it was a real shame that these sketches weren't in there anymore and we were just having a yeah. jolly old time and then this dude comes up behind the two of us and says you guys deserve this i was overhearing your conversation here you go and he hands me a jump drive where he basically did what i just did to syphil and ollie to the state <laughs> he's got wow. high quality versions of every episode of the state with all the original music uh, oh shit but i think is i think what he did was he took you know, episode recordings that had the uh, the proper music just removed yeah. the audio from those and attached them to the DVD quality video. I'm, that's that's my my guess. But yeah, he's just been he went to the previous state show and he brought like five or six jump drives to this one too. Just wanted to find people he thought would really appreciate what he did. And boy, did he strike fucking gold because I was like, Are "You fucking <laughs> kidding me? This is amazing!" Because he was just listening to us talk about the exact thing. Yeah, and how wouldn't it be cool if somebody did that? And then he was like. Yeah, here you go. This is this is it. So I brought it home, and it's not <laughs> full of viruses. As a matter of fact, somebody has. It actually, uh, it actually is what he said it was, and Evan just got it all up in the Plex earlier tonight, and I'm I'm thrilled beyond belief. So, yeah, that's that really was outstanding. Cool. Because now the rest of us have it too. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so that was that was Monday. Um, let's see what else was really cool that happened that's this not, week. There was something that's not bad for a Monday. No, it's really not. Um, Mondays are usually pretty terrible. Yeah, uh, that was that was Monday evening. Tuesday, I was pretty much just a zombie all day because yeah. I didn't get home till like one, two in the morning after <laughs> this this thing. And because you know we drove out to New York City, and, and yeah. that was a that was a treat. Um, it's oh not God, exactly I'm, around the corner. It's not the farthest not, place in the world, but not so much. It was I, it's uh, interesting. Uh, Sort of interesting, not really, but just coincidental, I suppose, because um, my father-in-law was here until Tuesday morning, um, so like there was no gaming over the weekend, nothing, none of that happened. Um, but uh, as as he was re uh on my dime and my couch, uh, fucking I Zombie, um, fucking Kenny Marino comes walking into <laughs> iZombie, and, and my father-in-law is like, oh, I love this guy. I was like, oh, you have no idea, Rick. You have no fucking clue who this guy is whatsoever. And I don't know if Rick would love the state, but, you know, maybe next time. It's worth a shot. <laughs> that is a weird show, by the way. iZombie? Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird show. It's a good show. I don't know if it's I like any, it a lot. I don't, I don't know if it's good. I haven't oh, been I able know to figure good. that part out yet. I love that show. I'm like four seasons into it. I don't know if it's any good or not, but it keeps <laughs> staying on, so oh, I man. rather I rather enjoyed it. I think it tied up nicely. It was a it's a very fun watch. Yeah. <laughs> See I got I got uh I, I was in really really positive headspace most of this week. I got a bunch of, you know, monetary stuff figured out around the house. I uh Realized I had a whole lot of vacation time to, to, to burn, so I'm figuring that out uh, for the end of the year. Um, I got back into Ring Fit this week. I, I properly nice. exercised and just got back on my quit being a fat bastard diet where I don't snack all the time and and been feeling pretty good about that this week. Uh, Ring Fit post game is pretty darn cool. Uh, yeah. I was going to go back and just be like, all right, time to start New Game Plus. And they're like, well, you can do this, but there's also this. And there's like <laughs> but, two whole new worlds that showed up this? of new stages and stuff for me to play. Like there's just a little extra nice. bonus content at the end. So I'm going back and trying to 100% complete all the the stuff that showed up after I beat Drago, and then I'm going to try out these new worlds. And then eventually I'll get back to a uh, new game plus. Um, yeah, we uh, we recorded a theater near you talking about Sean's favorite movie, Big Trouble in Little China, which I thought was fantastic, but also... That's oh, a great uh, fucking we, movie. We made a grave mistake when we chose our next episode, uh, which we didn't realize mm. at the time. See, now we're on the letter C. So sure. I wanted to do Clue, because I've never actually seen Clue. What? Exactly. How the fuck is that? I, like, I just... I don't know. Not, I know I you don't, don't watch know. a lot of movies. Like, you watch a lot of movies, but you don't watch a lot of movies somehow. I watch a lot of movies, but there's a lot of big ones that I've missed. And I've seen... I just, I just don't I've know I've seen how a lot of Clue, it. but I've never actually... Like, because I've seen it on TV or something. I've seen yeah. a lot of the movie, but I've never actually sat and watched the whole thing beginning to end. So that was my With all vote. the different endings and shit, and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That never really experienced the whole thing properly. 
Wow, Sean's man. pick, uh, Paul's pick was uh, Children of Men, but in Sean's pick was Caddyshack 2, because oh, he boo. is a big fan of the original Caddyshack. And Ooh, uh, yes. so, since we can't vote for our own things, I wasn't in the mood for uh, a super serious movie, so I voted for Caddyshack 2, and unfortunately Paul mm. did as well. So we wound Ooh. up with Caddyshack 2, and then we mm. looked up the reviews. <laughs> And apparently Caddyshack 2 is, like, damn near a war crime. So, yeah, I, that's going like, to be an evening. Do you like Caddyshack? Have you seen Caddyshack? Yeah, it's all right. I, I wouldn't don't say it's like my it. favorite I don't like that. it. Like, I straight up don't like it. And I love the people that are involved in that movie. Love Bill Murray. I love Chevy Chase. I love fucking Ronnie Dangerfield. I love... Oh, like I, f I hate that fucking movie. I was, I was more or less indifferent to it. I saw it for the first time not that long, probably like a decade ago. Sure, um, maybe a little bit more. I was probably closer to fifteen years ago. Is when I was still in shock a lot because we played a Caddyshack themed party that some rich dude Ew. hosted, and uh, so terrible. and I hadn't seen the movie, so I ran at the movie and watched it. I was like, yeah, okay, it's a good time. Yeah, it was yeah, a weird, no, I... it was a whole weird situation there. But anyways. Yeah, I thought it was fine. It didn't like mow me down, but it's like apparently Sean thinks it's one of the funniest movies he's ever seen in his life. So that is, but I imagine Caddyshack Two is going to be a real it's difficult not watch. Good. It's not good. Yeah, it's got it's, a um, it's got a four Metacritic rating. <laughs> I Sean feel was like, like that's, that's out of ten, that's right? Generous. Yeah, like, no, no, that's four out of a hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Uh, the and like I I am certainly not the best one to uh, voice their opinion on it because I think it's as good as the original Caddyshack, uh, um, which like I uh, I know that that is a controversial take of mine and people who know me and know the movies that I like and the the comedy that I like and all of that most of the time when I tell people I then also hate Caddyshack it just doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. That seems like a movie that I should love. Um, but I, I just, th I don't think it's funny. I, it's never made me laugh. And I wish it did. Because I feel like I'm missing something. Like, I feel like I'm wrong somehow. But I'm definitely not. It's not a good movie. <laughs> Clue is so okay. good, though. <laughs> I know. I'm just waiting for, like, I'm, I'm just imagining the Discord comments. Next week when this episode comes out, like you fucking prick, that's it. <laughs> I was on the fence and now I'm off. I'm going to listen to somebody else. <laughs> Clue is so fucking good though, Chris. It's such a good yeah. movie. I'm sure I'll catch it one of these days. Oh, it's, it so, might be Tim Curry's finest work. Uh, I feel, I can't shake the feeling that I'm forgetting something else, like relatively good that happened this week that I'm just. Spacing on, ah, three. It's just been a really, just... it's just been a really fun week. I, I yeah, I got a a, a, <laughs> a friend of mine. A friend of mine lives across the street from a florist who was giving away a shitload of mums. So I drove out there and got like eight free mums yesterday. That was good. I helped my mom out getting a new router today. Uh, I baked cookies last week. Mum, I, I made some really good tacos. Kids were eating tacos. It was great. Yeah, it's just been it's been a solid week. I have had very little time for gaming though, because I've been working like be between the state and recovering from the state, and then just yeah. the amount of work I've had to do. I've had very little time for gaming. Uh, really, the only stuff I've done is uh, a little bit more hat and time, and I was playing a little Mario All Stars, like just kind of gearing up for Mario Wonder right. and gearing up uh, for today. Gearing up for today, which has been a fun have day. You has um has a hat in time gotten any better for you? No. No, oh, that's no. not what I wanted to hear. But I'm not that much farther into it. Like really sure. uh, when I say that's all I played, I put in like maybe a half an hour. <laughs> like it's I'm not okay. I'm just, so yeah. I think yeah. I just beat the the uh -huh. head mafia guy. So like I'm not even past the mafia stuff yet. So like up on the up on the stage and shit? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I beat that yeah. guy. That was the last thing that I did, was I beat that guy. So, oh, cool. So, like, you can I'm go not... to the next world. You can go to uh, Dead Bird Studios, which is, I think, pretty cool. There's some interesting stuff in there. And 
Mustache whatever. Girl just became my enemy, and yeah, yeah. So uh, Which I, is, I, again, as it I, should be, because fuck her. She's yeah. I just don't like. I don't like her design. I don't like anything about her. Yeah. Like, it's not even like I'd fuck her as far as like, yeah, she's a villain and she sucks. But like, yeah, she does suck, but she also just sucks. I don't <laughs> think it's a good character. <laughs> but she also kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, we'll, that's, we'll have that conversation later. Because I said, I'm I'm not really ready to judge this game yet. I'm not, I don't think I'm far enough into it to really give my You're proper impression. Definitely not. You're definitely yeah. not. All right. Well, before before you start talking, yeah, yeah. Um, for before the next I start three hours Mario Wonder. About Mario Wonder. Um, I, like I said, my, my father-in-law was here until Tuesday, so I really haven't had, um, a ton of time to get into anything, but I did pick up, uh, Jamie, one of our listeners, uh, was kind enough to gift me, uh, a, a PlayStation, uh, gift card for my birthday a couple weeks ago. And then I fucking missed it for like a week and he had to yell at me in the discord to fucking check my DMs in there. Cause I totally forget like that <laughs> discord has DMs. I was like, Oh shit, that's fucking awesome, man. Thank you. Um, so I picked up, uh, two things. Uh, well, one thing last week before my father-in-law came, um, and I got to play like two minutes of it and then he showed up and I was like, all right, well that's done. Uh, but then another thing that went on sale this week. So what I what I picked up last week and spent some time with uh, was a game that I that I've had like on my wish list for uh, I don't know a year year and a half whatever. Uh, and it's uh, that Kaze and the Wild Masks. Um, oh yeah, it, uh, Mike liked that game a lot. He said it was very Donkey Kong Country. I, I was just gonna say like if you like Donkey Kong Country, this is the game for you. Like it it is not shy. About wearing its Donkey Kong Country uh, influence on its fucking sleeve. Down to the point where you collect throughout the levels. Because it's like a -a collect-a-thon kind of platformer thing. Um, Again, very similar to uh, to Donkey Kong Country. But as you're going through, you collect little uh, square tokens that spell out the character's name. Like K-A-Z-E. And it's like, wow, that is just fucking spot on. it's fucking crazy, but what's really cool about it is that you, you know you go through through the levels and you have like your your typical bullshit that you have in in all of like these uh platformer games where you've got your ice level and your windy level and like all of that different shit um but then you get like but then the boss fights are fucking epic and super cool, and the masks that you get throughout the game actually do a lot of like really interesting things there's a bird mask and a fish mask and a fucking dragon mask that i got to today and it's just a really solid little game like i i'm really really enjoying it and it i didn't realize that i wanted to play something that kind of scratched that donkey kong country itch but i was like oh this this feels this is good this is kind of right in the nostalgia feels and the character's cute and you know like you can do a little like hover jump with uh she spins her rabbit ears around and the the villains are like all these weird mutated vegetables and there's giant carrots and eggplants and corn on the cob and shit it's fucking it's weird uh but I dig it so I've been having a good time with that but then I also uh picked up because it was on sale for like 45 bucks and I had money left over and I was like all right well this will this will make this like 20 bucks. So I picked up uh, Jedi Survivor finally and oh. put, I don't know, maybe, maybe the like, because uh, Spider-Man 2 came out today and I'm going to wait to get Spider-Man 2 until it's like on sale. Like I figured Black Friday, something like that. It'll be cheaper. Um, So I was like, well, let me get, let me get the Star Wars game now. I'll play through that by the time, you know, November hits and Black Friday, I should be ready for, for a Spider-Man 2 thing. But it's, um, that's really fucking good, man. It's really good. Like, the the fact that they built this game natively for the current generation consoles uh, really, really shows. You know, playing it through on the PlayStation 5, the last one, uh, Fallen Order, with the, you know, the, the PS4 game that was patched to the PS5 with the updated whatever uh, shit that I don't fucking know. You know, like just all the different things that they did to to get it to run and look a little bit better on the PS5. This one being built natively for this generation of platforms really fucking shows. Like it is a stunning game. 
playing through and the fucking lightsaber combat is really fucking cool. You've got, cause you, you did finish the last one, right? We talked about that. Like you finished the whole thing. Fallen Order? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure. Cause I, you start and, and stop so many games have a hard time remembering what you finished. But like, so by the end of Fallen Order, you have like the, the, uh, double bladed lightsaber, right? And you're fucking around and that's fucking awesome. Um, this one, you start with that, like you can swap between both stances, like right away, uh, which is really cool. The map is way better in this one because I found the map system mm, in, yeah. in Fallen Order to be just not great. fucking pointless. <laughs> um, and this one is still <laughs> not great. Um, but it, it's not great the way the map in Hollow Knight isn't great. You know, where it's like, okay, yeah. this isn't super useful, but it's not. Uh, it, it's I see not what you were going put- for. Yeah. This isn't. This doesn't suck because you're inept. This sucks because of a choice. Yeah, this was a choice you made, and I disagree with this choice. I don't know what would have been better, but but this wasn't the way I would have done it. Um, so like that's a little bit better. Uh, the character, like the voice acting, still really good. Um, I there's a fucking setting. As you're setting up the game and you're like going through and looking at the all the different options, there's an arachnophobia mode, which I don't know. I'm sure that was pointed out at somewhere is somewhere along the way, but there there's a little toggle that you can click and it says will make one of the creatures in the game look less spider like. <laughs> it's like what the fuck is that? Oh, uh, you How remember. Is the- I don't know if you remember back when I was playing Shadows Overloaded, Loathing, the that has an arachnophobia mode, but it also has arachnophilia mode. You know, no, I like I that makes sense in that game, right? <laughs> well, there's actually a bunch a- of games that have arachnophobia modes. Like um I, I, uh, Big Brain just, Academy has an arachnophobia mode where it's just like Does it? People don't <clears throat> like spiders, so if there's an easy way to toggle off things that are uh spider related, then uh it's kind of a nice thing for for games to do, but I just thought it was hysterical that one was like there will be there will be far fewer spiders or arachnophilia. There will be so many spiders. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I fucking love that game. I just I fucking like I I just I forgot about the arachnophobia shit. It, it's just it's a weird fucking choice in my opinion because there's a lot of shit in video games that like could be. Uh, fucking triggering I suppose to a lot of people but like why why do spiders get the the treatment and not other things I think it's just the fact that they, I think it's just because they are what they are they're it's a very common phobia where it's like if somebody if somebody sees like some horrible grotesque monster it's like well that's a horrible grotesque monster but arachnophobia is yeah. like it's a different, like, it's, it's a much more visceral, like, real fear, where it's like, fuck, spider, too many legs, must kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the, the, um, I don't know if we've ever talked about this before. Do you know the rationale behind why he, so many people are afraid of, of spiders? No. Like, the scientific reasoning behind it. Um, it, it harkens back to the fact that we are predators, right? Human beings are predators, our eyes in the front. We're not prey animals, we're predators. Um, So when things confront us like that, uh, that have the ability to go in any direction possible, there is an innate fear in us that we cannot predict its next movement. Therefore, we get scared. Hmm. Because at back in the day, when we were fucking three hairs away from a chimp, if a lion was chasing me, I knew which way the lion was going to go because I could see where its fucking face was. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, if, it, if it's coming towards me, it's coming towards me. And a lion can't really change direction on a fucking dime. But something like a spider absolutely can. It can be coming directly at you and instantaneously be moving in any fucking direction that it wants to be. 
So we just naturally have a fear of things that can do that. Which is kind of neat. It's a pretty serious the more you know moment there. Right? Let's fuck it. All right. Podcast over. Yeah. We're done. There you go. I'm I'm rewatching West Wing right now. Background watching West Wing. Such a good show. Such and everything like that was you just had your Josiah Bartlett talking about parks <laughs> moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> what about on Sunday when all of the men will be touching the skin of a pig? <laughs> Do they have to be killed as well? Or just the team or just the uh, visiting team or whatever the fuck he says. Just the ones. All I'm saying them. is if you were running for president, I'd vote for you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I would be a fucking terrible president. Oh my god, I would be so bad. <laughs> I would be <laughs> that's I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But I would I would, no, actually I'd be all right cuz I would hire people that knew what they were doing. I'll just come out and do the talky bits. <laughs> like, what's up guys? How you doing? Exactly. Yeah, you you, you crazy, have a, right? you have a cabinet full of people who know how to get shit done. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just hire people from our Discord. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be like that fucking episode of Family Guy where uh, they're living in the fucking post-nuclear apocalypse. Like, where were you back in the old world? A doctor. Oh, man, we need one of those. Let's hope you pull it out of the hat. That's how I would, <laughs> that's how I would run the government. Just assign all of the Discord people different jobs within. Secretary of the Interior. Good job, Matt. Well, <laughs> fucking get it done. I don't know what it does either. It's fucking fine. Anyway, so yeah, Star Wars, uh, it's fucking good. I, like, I, I didn't get a chance to get super far into it um, because, you know, after uh, after the father-in-law left, I had to catch up on television that I had missed. And then, like, Wednesday, obviously, is wrestling, so nothing happens then. Uh, mm. Thursday, last night, was then a new episode of Loki. And now we're doing this bullshit. So this yeah. weekend, hopefully, <laughs> I will jump into it more. I hope we can catch up on some of our TV soon. This next week oh. won't be. I won't have four fucking podcasts next week. So. Yeah, right. There, there is an option too that I thought was interesting in the customizing Cal Kestis section. Like you can change his clothing and uh, you know the colors and and all of that. So, ooh, he's not wearing a jacket. I can take his jacket off, and now it's just a jumper. Um, but you could take off his stubble. You can make him clean shaven. It's like that's it's a fucking weird option that you coded in there, but all right, go off. It's not as weird that's as fun. if you could take off his stubble and put it somewhere else. But. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a unibrow. Why is that a fucking option? It's very strange. I'm take off his stubble and put it on his droid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love love that little guy. What he's the hell so is that thing's name? BD. Uh, no, not BD8. What the fuck is it called? Oh, now I can't think of anything but BDA. I can't fuck, remember. It'll his, come back to me. I can't remember his name, but there. yeah, yeah, that, he's more cool. droids should have beards. They should, but yes, a hundred percent. That's the platform I'm going to run on for my presidency. <laughs> like, sir, that has nothing to do with the ongoing humanitarian crisis. I don't fucking care. Droids have beards, damn it. Even the girl ones. Beards can't grow in space. But I have a beard. The fuck they can't. Then you're an alien. (laughs) He's not an alien. He's from Pittsburgh. (laughs) They did that one. (laughs) Nice. And in fact, the hats that they were selling were the logo for the bearded men of Space Station 11, which was awesome. Oh, that is (laughs) outstanding. I would have I would have gotten one of those. That would have been. Uh, Today was a good day for records. I like hats. Today was a good, oh, day for, okay. a good day for records. Uh, I got my That Thing You Do record in the mail today. It's really good. Sorry, uh, I was vaping. I wanted to talk about uh, comment. I thought you were going to keep going. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Um, I thought Tiff was going to get it for my birthday, and, and she didn't. So I didn't huh. get it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's really fucking it's good. Kinda... It's got a little 45 in it with the, like, the, the single oh, and so the B-side cool. from the that's movie. That's such a fucking cool attention to detail. Oh my god, it's so so good. It's it sounds great. It looks great. It's a uh, it's got a really nice little like not really an art book, but it's just like big like yeah. seven or eight page full size booklet with lots of great photos like uh, behind the scenes photos on it, and uh, the songs are all credited to like 
the wonders, Captain Geach, the shrimp shack shooters, like they're oh, credited awesome. their characters from the movie, which is, which is really great. The whole thing is written as if it was a record that came, a playtone record that came out. Like it's really, really cool. That's um, really fucking neat. And when I was leaving target on the way out, uh, uh, for after buying Mario wonder this morning, I, uh, spotted the, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas Vince Guaraldi trio final yeah. at Target. I was like, well, I'm buying that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen that so many times at Target and Walmart. And I'm like, man, I should. I did. I picked up um, the uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. They just put out a, uh, a Zoetrope uh, double disc or double uh, LP version of that soundtrack. So I picked that up um, for Penn. And I picked up the uh, the fucking Mariah Carey's Christmas record um, <clears throat> for Katie because she fucking loves that shit. Ferg actually sent me some records uh, that I got in the mail, and uh, we listened to them while uh, while my father in law was here. Um, and they're really fucking good. I love that Billy Joel record. It's so good. Wings are, are it's it's fucking wings. You know, I'm in. Um, but Ferg was like, give them the Mike Naismith record a try. And uh, and I really liked it. It was really good. We listened to it uh, during dinner one evening, and uh, and and my father in law really liked it too. So thank you, Ferg. That was really awesome. Nice. Yeah, he sent me a box of all kinds of weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, weird and, shit. Yeah, that's weird shit. Is good though. I love um, it. I made a, I made a video about it. It's going up on Monday. <laughs> nice. The uh, I think I told you about it. I might have put put it in the uh, the Discord or whatever. But uh, I ordered uh, the fucking Welcome Interstate Managers uh, was on sale for like ten bucks or Yay. something like that. It was Great crazy record. So that came in, and and Tiff and I just listened to that. Like we just sat on the couch and fucking listened. It's so fucking good. That is a really good it's album such right a there. Good album. Love found top to point. bottom. Top to bottom. They don't have a bad anyway, album. They just don't. They really the don't. Only, the they only really one I'm missing was their last record. It's the only one that I don't have on vinyl yet, because it hasn't been reissued on vinyl, as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it As soon be. as it is, I hope so. I want it. It's a great album. I, don't know. I, want, I want my fucking Guacamole soundtracks. Still no, uh, still no communication back. I've sent my a Mighty second Mighty email. Boston's has had a shipping label created for it, like, earlier Ooh. this week, and that's still exactly where it is. It's like... Well, they made a label. <laughs> It'll That's be something. here someday. That's something. God damn. Well, that was another fun evening that I had uh, this week. I uh, Since I was out of town, usually I take Ellie to cheer practice on Mondays. But since I was out Monday, I took her to cheer on Wednesday. And I am totally... I, I'm clearly in the mom category. <laughs> because... Uh, oh, yeah. Like... 100%. I go... But either me or Karen goes, but then there's either two couples that go. And um I sat down with the moms <laughs> and like the dads were over <laughs> on the other head, other side and I was just like chatting away with the moms. <laughs> and uh one of the moms uh was uh, her her name's Lisa, she was talking about uh we're talking about cleaning stuff because, you know, I'm me. Moms and uh That's moms. Right. and uh ladies she brought- <laughs> clean where they belong. <laughs> She brought up, and she texted me the following day the link to it, uh, and it is now on my Christmas list. It is the Bissell Power Fresh Steam Mop. I didn't Ooh. know steam mops were a thing. Oh, like, really? I have this shitty-ass I fucking ass cannot live without it. I am, uh, I am excited about this thing. It's like, it's $92. It's on my Christmas list. And, like, it just looks like exactly what I need in my life for keeping the kitchen floor clean. Because the kitchen floor... It's such a pain in my ass because the kids always yeah. make a mess. The dog makes a mess. Everything makes a mess. And of then, course. like, my Swiffer is nowhere near good enough to clean all that stuff without me really scrubbing away at it. And then when I'm done, I'm just getting a rag and getting down on my hands and knees and cleaning it up anyway. Or I'll right. get, like, the mop and bucket situation. Which is situation, what you should have fucking whole... started with. Yeah. Exactly. Like, why did I waste time with this mop? It doesn't make anything yeah. easier. Or I get, like, a mop mop and a, bo- and a bucket and just, like, go to town. And that's a whole ass production. But this... This seems like exactly what I want out of life. I'm really excited about it. I fucking adore my steam mop. I especially with the amount of uh dogs that come in and out of the home that are not potty trained as I have to then like fucking potty train them and all of that shit. The steam mop is the best fucking thing. 
I love it, love it, love it. And then especially taking it up because we have hardwood throughout the house and then the kitchen has uh, tile in it. Um, and it's just like, uh, it, it's, it's fucking magic. It's magic. I'm excited. You should be. I bet if I don't get it for Christmas, I'm just fucking buying it. <laughs> yeah, no, you should. You should buy it right now. While we're talking, go on and get it. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. I'm going to wait. Everyone, uh, uh, my mother-in-law and people, they complain that, like, they look at my Christmas list, and they're like, I don't I don't want to get any you any of that shit. I don't, don't want to get you that. I don't know what this stuff is. It's like, yeah. what do you mean you don't know what it is? They're video games. All you need to do is buy that thing. That thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. what this is. You don't need to. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's for me. <laughs> you don't need to so, know what it is. So I, I, I now have a handful of things that I want in this house. Like I'm, we're in need of a new toaster. Our toaster oh. is not toasting. The scent, like the center column, is not toasting. So it's like, oh, that's no not good. Not evenly toasting everything, which is kind of obnoxious. There's the mop, there's the, like ear, new ear pods, uh, air pods, my old ones are broken. But anyway, mm. back to business. So I picked up Super Mario Wonder. Mm -hmm. I came home to, to sit down and play it, and Karen came down, and she actually played the first two levels with me. Because uh, I didn't want to go too far without the kids being directly involved, because I know they were super yeah. excited to play it. Uh, so I uh, played the first two levels of the game. The first level is one of the levels I played at Target. Uh, mm -hmm. which was super fun. It's the one that's in the trailer where you get the wonder yeah. flower and all the pipes start coming to life. And it was, it's really fun. It's really cool. I have a lot to say about that. Uh, but the second level had me smiling and laughing so hard that I was in tears. It was, and I, this isn't this, I, I'm going to say spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played it yet, because really <laughs> you should let this be a surprise, but I know Dan doesn't care, oh, and I want to talk to no, him about it. No, in that it. case, I can't <laughs> listen, Chris. I'm going to tune out right now, too. So, the whole thing with the game is these wonder seeds, right? Ever, or the yeah. wonder flowers. You get the wonder flower and shit goes bug nuts. I was not prepared for what happened in the second level when you get the wonder flower. It's so, like, you start the level, and a piranha plant comes out doing its normal thing, except then it just jumps out and starts walking away. <laughs> okay. I mean, we've seen piranha plants walk around before, but this just looked particularly odd. He just gets up and just starts walking around. And the whole level is just filled with these piranha plants that are walking around. And eventually you get towards the end and you grab the wonder flower and they start singing. And okay. it turns into an auto scroll level and it's just a chorus of piranha plants in the background and the foreground popping out and just singing, harmonizing the whole nine yards. Not words, just... <laughs> like, I don't know what the song was, but it was it was lovely. It was strange. It was so fucking weird. And it was hysterical, because they just keep popping out and singing along and harmonizing with each other. And if you kill some of them while they're singing, that part of the harmony goes away. Like, that voice gets taken out of the song. Oh, no. But, like... Don't kill them because they're singing to you for some goddamn reason. It's so weird. <laughs> it was fucking wonderful. I was so happy. I am. That's amazing. I am kind of pissed off at this game and not even really at this game. I'm this game is making me kind of mad at Nintendo because okay. there is nothing it's so good. There's nothing technological that stopped them from doing this before. This okay. is exactly as we had said, but I was, I was thinking like, this is the first time 2d Mario has been this like creative since Mario world. And when I yeah. was playing it today, uh, played a handful of levels. I was, I was dying on this one level and I got when I, a big smile on my face, edge of my seat, like, okay, all right, I can do this. I can do this. And I was like, I haven't felt this way about 2D Mario since I was a kid. Yeah. And I was watching some comparison videos today of New Super Mario Brothers U, like the most recent one, versus this game. And it is, it's infuriating that they've had the ability to make a game like this out of Mario forever, and they have chosen not to. Like, I, I don't know that that's fair. Well, it new Super Mario have, Brothers. Have they? But have they chosen not to? 
or they just hadn't had these ideas yet? Well, clearly there's, you know, like the the level of creativity for Mario games hasn't stopped in 3D games. Right, the 3D Mario games are weird and goofy and super creative yeah. and bizarre. And New Super Mario Brothers has been very specifically and intentionally stagnant. Right, New Super Mario Brothers was we're going to make this safe one. Oh, that sold a bajillion copies. We're only doing this now. And then they yeah. did that four times. And looking mm. at this and what happens if, because like they, there's been a lot of developer diaries published about this from Nintendo. And the big difference between this and the previous 2D Mario games, just starting with New Super Mario Brothers, was that the people making the game were given the freedom to do what they want. Instead of, no, we need to stick, this is the specific kind of game we want to make. These are, this is what you can do. This is what we're adhering to. And in this one, they just, like they did with Breath of the Wild, they just crumpled up the rule book and said, fucking go nuts. Make a new yeah. game. And it's it's the little things that add up. Because, like, control-wise, it's not like it's crazy different from New Super Mario Brothers. And even some of the themes and ideas in New Super Mario Brothers could have been this effective had they been able uh, allowed to stray from the norm. Like, little things. Like, when Mario goes into a pipe, instead of doing what he did in Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, 3 in World, where he just stands perfectly still and sinks down into yeah. a pipe, he jumps down into the pipe. You know, when he beats a level, he doesn't spin around and take his hat off with a goofy smile on his face and then walk in. He has several expressions, and his eyes move around and look around, and he gets excited and then happy. When he gets a fire flower, he doesn't stay still, and the colors change on his, on his outfit. When he gets the fire flower, he does a little spin around and strikes a pose. He throws the fireballs instead of just putting up his hand. It's his entire animation, all the characters, their animations are designed around how does it look good from the camera's perspective instead of here's a 3D model, have him do the thing. So like when Mario jumps in New Super Mario Brothers, it's the 3D model jumping. When Mario jumps in Super Mario Wonder, it's the 3D model jumping except it's been tilted in a completely unnatural way, like in a cartoon, so that it looks as good as possible instead of being right. accurate. It's that kind of personality that is everywhere in this game. And the way enemies react to you, because in the 3D Mario game, you get close to a Goomba, they charge you, things like that. Right. But in the other games, they just kind of walk towards you. And this thing, everything reacts to you. Everything is alive. Even those stupid flowers are great. They're actually <laughs> really great. I've... I have yet to even have a, a, a desire at all to turn the voices off because they're actually pretty funny and kind of helpful. It is, <laughs> and it's kind of infuriating that this is the yeah. kind of game that theoretically could have been made at any point, but it was a very specific decision not to. Like, no, we're making new Super Mario Brothers. That's what this is. And I think that's why, it's clearly a large part of why people were so down on those games, because they had played 3D World, or 3D Land, or Galaxy, and said, why aren't you doing this? Like, Why, why is 2D yeah. Mario relegated to this? And this is what happens when you put the A-team on 3D Mario. And another thing i got to say, I'm really liking the new voices. Like, Mario's voice... Is now to, now that I'm playing the game and hearing more of it, it is noticeably different. And I have to really? say, I really like it. And I think I understand what I think I understand why they changed it. And I do. I also understand. Think I understand why they changed it here, because again, like Breath of the Wild, this game seems like the goal is to kind of reset what the expectations for Mario are. Because okay. the degree of creativity and just the the way it looks, like every the the worlds are just astounding. All the backgrounds are nuts, and that was something that I, I I'll swing back to uh, related to Mario All Stars. But the thing about Mario's voice is, it sounds like, and there's no actual hint of this in the game so far, but just from listening to his expressions. It sounds like this newer version of the voice is designed to sound better conversationally. Like, if mm, Mario's okay. going to say a sentence or something, it's 
not going to sound ridiculous like Charles Martinet's voice did. I'm not saying that it was bad. I've had plenty of interactions with him when he used to do those like things at the Game Crazy conferences yeah. where he would talk yeah, yeah. behind a screen or something like that was great, but it was also really like weird. <laughs> but it's also it's, absurd. Yeah. yeah, it's also completely absurd. It kind of sounds like it would be very possible for Mario to like say a couple of sentences and not have it sound completely insane. Um, well, there goes the rest of our listeners, Chris. <laughs> that's my guess. Um, <laughs> but I am really, really digging the voice. But the, the backgrounds are another thing that are really, really, really impressing me on this. The other day when I was playing Mario All-Stars, I was playing through just Mario 1 and Mario All-Stars, just going level by level. And one of the things yeah. I loved so much about that version of Super Mario 1 is just the, how much the backgrounds brought that game to life. Like, I mm -hmm. loved how they updated the, the visuals in it. You know, I love the way they updated Mario's sprite in it. Like, all the other games in Mario All-Stars, Mario 2 and 3, are, well, yeah, the other two games, because Mario right. uh, Lost Levels is the same thing as Mario 1, visually speaking. Um, those games, they added some backgrounds, but they basically just recolored the NES games. But they completely reworked Super Mario Brothers from the ground up. Like, they didn't yeah. just color recolor any of those sprites. They redrew that game. And those backgrounds, especially going from stage to stage, they filled me with so much joy and, like, I loved the way they looked and kind of made the world feel alive when I was a kid. Like, you'd get to the the world 1-3 with the, or sorry, 2-3 where the flying fish are jumping at you and you're running across the bridge. And in the background, mm -hmm. there's all these, like, pillars with statues of Goombas on the back of them. Or in, like, 1-3 where it was supposed to be you're on top of those tree things. But now in the background, you see these, like, huge clouds spilling over top of these rocks that have all these waterfalls going over them. Like, there's all these it interesting just made the backgrounds. It the, the entire world come to life. It really did. And that hasn't really been repeated since, you know? Like, Super Mario World did a great job with that. But All-Stars obviously came a few years later, so it did an yeah. even better job of it. But then... New Super Mario Brothers, at its core, had this very sterile art style to it, so it never really got too wacky with what was going on in the background. So New Super Mario Brothers, you kind of like hinted at doing things like that, and it was a big improvement over New Super Mario Brothers Wii. But at the same time, it still it still wasn't quite like it. It was never got to the point where you'd stop and be like, "Wow, that is so weird and cool!" Like the Goomba statues in the background of Super Mario All Stars. Every level I've played in Wonder so far, which is only like five or six, has been like that. All the backgrounds, they don't look like the same very basic primary color things that the Mario series has been for a long time. Even the basic, yeah. like, the grass, grassish land, like, the colors are different. And the, the hills, they go back for forever. Like, they look like, not here's a couple of neat looking weird hills in the background. It's like... Here's a world back there, and they add so much depth and wonder to this entire experience. <laughs> I'm How dare blown you. the fuck away by the limited time I've had with this so far. I haven't even fought any bosses yet, but I am just... Man, between Tears of the Kingdom, Sea of Stars, and now this, this has just been... This has been a hell of a couple of months for, for, for video games yeah. for me. I'm just it really has, over the right? moon. Like I can't believe I, man, how good it is. I can. I, really, I should. But hmm. I really wish I I liked it. Like it's just not for me. I do, yeah. I get like, it. I see it though, and I saw everybody talking about it today, and I was like, man, I really wish I could be into this. And like, I could I could buy it, and I could pretend. But like, man, I'm so happy for everybody that this game is is having an impact on like a positive impact. And, and this is the thing people have wanted. Um, yeah, it's... that's just fucking great. Like it, it, I wanted this thing. I anticipated this thing. I thought it was going to be great. And Oh, look, it's better than I thought it was going to be like, how fucking often does that happen? I forgot what it felt like to be this excited about a 2d Mario game. Cause I've been replaying super Mario world since 1991. And Obviously, Yoshi's Island, is, it's a kind of a different animal, but I was also so excited throughout that entire game. It was just, like, really itching to play it. 
And this one, I was telling myself that I was really excited for, but I just couldn't actively get there the same way I did for Tears of the Kingdom and yeah. Sea of Stars because, and on this very superficial level, I just all I think of with 2D Mario and the amount of creativity they put into it was the new Super Mario Brothers games, which are good. They're good games. I enjoy them. Yeah, but like, sure. This is a whole different ball game. This is. There's a little thing, there's a little hidden block you can hit in Yoshi's Island that's like, we put our hearts and souls into this game and we really hope you like it. And like, yeah, that, that shines through 100%. This is that kind of game. And that was in the fucking 90s. It has been so long <laughs> yeah. since there's been a new 2D Mario game that fits that mold. And it's like, oh, right. This is why I love this series so much. Like, this is it right this, here. This is why I became a cop. This is why. It's right here. <laughs> now, it's – I felt very uh, similarly, um, completely different type of game. Um, but that that's like the feeling that I had when I, when I was talking about Inscription, like playing through that earlier this year of like really capturing the magic of what video games can be. Um just that kind of that unpredictability, that unknown going into it. Like, cause even, even games that I fucking loved, you know, like even Sea of Stars, like Sea of Stars is fucking great, but I knew where we were going. You know what I mean? Like I knew what was coming for the most part. Like at, there, there was some, some, some impactful moments, you know, that, that happened throughout that game. But, if if you've played the games that obviously inspired Sea of Stars, you kind of knew where you were going. You know, like you were saying with the with the other Mario games, like I know, I know where this goes. I know what we're doing here. There it's safe, it's good. It's it's a comfortable pair of jeans that I put on, you know. But then you play something else and you're like, "Oh, fuck. All right, I've never had leather pants." But this is this is leather pants. That I all right. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I see what's <laughs> going on here. You know, like it's just it's so nice. It's so nice that even however many years we're like what you you and I we're in our 40s now, so we are 35 plus years into video gaming, right? Like it's a safe number. Yeah. Um it's really nice that you can still get those moments where it's like, Oh, okay. This is why I became a cop. Like I get it. This is why, this is why I do this. This is why I enjoy this medium as much as I do. Why it's had such an impact on me. This is well why I said. became a cop leather pants. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. it's just, <laughs> yeah. I, it, I tried to make it stupid too, but it is like genuinely heartfelt. You know, it, it's, it's fucking crazy that that shit can happen. And I, I really am. It, it, it has brought me reading through the discord today and seeing so many people so excited for a new Mario game and the, 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 the chatter around it that has been nothing, um, Nothing but positive, you know, uh, it, it, ignoring the stupid shit <laughs> outside on, of the crazies. Yeah. Like outside of the bots and the stupid shit on Twitter. Like it, it's just, which is becoming, oh my God, just so, so, so obvious. It's fucking nuts. Like I saw somebody earlier today posted a thing about, uh, Brian Pillman, who was a wrestler. Apparently today was is the anniversary of the last match that he wrestled uh, in WWE because it was it, back in the day it was a Saturday night and they had a Saturday night show the go home show before the pay per view that was supposed to be on Sunday and uh, and he died of a heart attack at, at 35 years old um, because drugs are bad kids don't fucking do them um, you know and uh, and it was just like okay so like that was posted on Twitter. And then, like, the next 12 comments after it were a bunch of different people with a bunch of blue checks next to them somehow uh, that basically all were reposting, like, the same biography of Brian Pillman. It was just like, God, what, fuck, make it more obvious. Jesus Christ. 
So, like, it, taking all of that shit out of it of, like, wow, they're changing Charles Martinet's voice, and then you get a bunch of bots that just come in and, like, wow, Nintendo's the worst fucking bro, they should die in a fire of fucking just the worst fire possible. They, they should no arachnophobia mode for Nintendo. They don't get to turn that fucking setting off. All the spiders go to Nintendo. Like, people are just loving it. It's fucking great, man. I love that. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm, you know, I'm filled with Christ's love, Chris. Me too. I've been filled with, uh, <laughs> filled with lots of love this week. It's been a, it's been a good week for electric mops and Mario and <laughs> just a, just a, just a real good, good vibe week. Oh. But now we got to wait for the said, other shoe to drop. Yeah. I mean, obviously, shit in the world hasn't been going well, so it's been <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, no, uh, I know. It's, it's been, been nice, nice having us. that. It's been good for two guys from Jersey. Other than that, everything is a disaster. Yeah, you know, let's let's take what we can get That's and right. uh, be happy that there's uh, some good TV and good video games to, to, to rock around with. There was, there was a new Blink-182 album that came out today, Chris. It's That's okay. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if you like Blink One Eighty Two, this shit's for you. It was, it was all right. <laughs> That's how I feel about Blink One Eighty Two. It's all right. I had a really good sandwich today. God, oh, I had fuck, a good sandwich love, today. Love a good sandwich. I I had got some some nice lunch meat from a local shop, Santorius, out here, and uh, I had this bread that had been going. It, the sandwiches had been going pretty well this week, but today I had run out of the bread, the loaf of bread that I bought. And on that my sucks. way back from uh, my way back from doing some uh, some errands for my mom today, I was like, you know what? I'm going to Wawa and I'm getting a shorty roll, just a shorty roll, and I'm going to put this lunch meat on that shorty roll. And fuck, was it good! I have just enough to make another one tomorrow, which I'm absolutely going to do. I'm going to go to it's Wawa, get one of their shorty rolls, and just it's just Swiss, some black pepper ham, and some Genoa salami. With oil and vinegar, salt, pepper, oregano, and uh, yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's one of yes, the things please. that Wawa has yet to fuck up is the shorty roll. They're still pretty good. Yeah, there. I, I was. It was a weird change when they started making their own. Uh, it is a little bit different than it used to be way back in the old days. But I really oh, like sure. them. They're very but good. It's, it's it's good. Yeah, it's it, it's really good. I prefer it. I don't know that I 100% prefer it on the sandwiches. Like, it's it's close. It's real close. But I definitely prefer yeah. it for the for the buttered roll situation. It's like, yeah. a buttered shorty roll, when you're not feeling too good, that's... Mm. Uh, God, I would eat the, the shit chicken, out of one of those right now. The chicken soup and the buttered shorty? It's For those of you who don't have a Wawa near you, uh, give them a minute, because they apparently seem to be trying to take over the world, which sucks. Because um, they're down the road from my house... Uh, is the one thousandth Wawa store? Wow! Um, and it, it it is proudly displayed outside, like it's got the Wawa logo, lo, logo, whatever the fuck that <laughs> is, logo up at the top, and then underneath of it, it says like the one thousandth Wawa store. And then there, I was just like flipping through the paper because the kid was making, um, making her own Halloween costume, um, and she needed newspaper to do like a paper mache kind of thing for a head piece that she's making. And uh, in there, there's an article about how over the next, like, two or three years, not like 10 years, not like a, a reasonable business plan, but over the next two or three years, Wawa plans to expand uh, their, their footprint to at least 3,000 stores. And it's like, man, that is that is growth at a level that is going to fucking take your your decidedly mediocre product over the last couple of years and just not help. Just not help it at all. And I Hey, did sad. you know Wawa has pizza? <laughs> oh, God. It's okay pizza. I've had it. Because they're right? advertising the shit. <laughs> oh, man. I, it's, it is, it is better than Domino's and Papa John's and Pizza Hut and like all of whatever the fuck that is. Um, it's better than that, but it's still not like good northeast pizza. Yeah, it's still not like yeah. It's it's not what I'm after. It's Did a weird you, in between thing. Do you remember um 
Do you remember their last attempted pizza? Probably about 10 years ago. I don't, because really I wasn't f- living up here then. It was really fucking weird. It was tasty, but it was so yeah. different from pizza that it was like, okay, okay I, I feel okay getting this, because this is, this is not scratching the pizza itch at all. This is just weird. It was some strange, like, super thick, like, they were personal, personal pan pizza sized. They were super okay. thick, like, really poofy bread, and then, like, some pizza sauce. Like, and, like, like a focaccia? Yeah, kind of, but less oily, okay. I would say. Less, less crunchy. Okay. It's like, it was just, it's an indescribably weird thing. It was tasty, but huh. it was just really bizarre. And it didn't last all that long. But they really tried. And now yeah, they no, just have these, pizzas. Now they're just like, here's yeah, a pizza. Is, we're going to heat it up, and here, here you go. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's handmade. Sure it is. Yeah. It's not a, I mean, you put your hands on it and then put it in the oven, I suppose, if that counts as handmade. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird fucking thing. Like I said, I mean, I mean, I don't think they're in Ohio yet, but for our, our Ohio listeners, if you haven't experienced Wawa, like give them a minute, they'll be there. Yeah, good times. But with that, I think we should take a break and uh, then we'll get started on the, uh, the old 10, 20, 30, 40. Mario Wonder is fucking fantastic. I'll probably have more to say about it next week. Uh, but right now, I'm 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 filled with uh, piss and vinegar and, and smiles, and I really just can't wait to play more Mario <laughs> Wonder, goddammit. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do the 10, 20, 30, 40, which is going to be a, a hoot and a holler, I hope. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. We are Safe at Home, the leading dog rescue in the heart of New Jersey. Are you searching for a loyal companion, a dog that will bring love and joy to your home? Look no further than Safe at Home. At Safe at Home, we believe in giving every dog a second chance. We rescue, rehabilitate, and find loving forever homes for dogs in need, right here in the Garden State. Our dogs are ready to make a lasting impact on your life. Each one has a unique story, a wagging tail, and an incredible capacity for love when you adopt from safe at home you're not just gaining a pet you're becoming a part of our family our dedicated team ensures a seamless adoption process providing ongoing support and guidance with new jersey's beautiful parks beaches and trails you and your new furry friend will have endless opportunities for adventures and cherished memories safe at home relies on the support of compassionate individuals like you Your donations and volunteer work enable us to continue saving lives and finding forever homes for these amazing dogs. Join us in creating a safer, happier community for dogs in New Jersey. Together we can make a difference and give every dog the chance to feel safe at home. Visit our website or call us now to learn about how you can be a part of the Safe at Home mission. Safe at Home, because every dog deserves to be loved and protected www.safeathomerescue.org Hi everyone, Chris here. Podcast listening is free, but podcast creation is not. That's why the Geekade Patreon exists. In an effort to help us pay the bills, we've got a Patreon page set up where you can gain access to our monthly podcast topic schedule, get early access to many of our shows, and more. If you'd like to help support Geekade and keep these shows running week after week, head over to the Geekade Patreon page, linked in the show notes of this very podcast. We have returned. Backstreet is back. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to do the 10, 20, 30, 40. This is where Dan and I go through uh, notable game releases from 10, 20, 30, and 40 years ago this month. It is October 2023. So we're going to be uh, jumping back in time to various things. Now, unlike previous weeks, I decided that trying to like prep these pages ahead of time is a complete fucking waste of time because none of it's going to work <laughs> out the way I wanted to anyway. So, Definitely not. So this oh, time, man. I'm just going to click on links links, and fucking wing it. 
Sorry, so? I, 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 I audibly groaned there because I, I just opened uh, a beer. Um, uh, as, again, my father-in-law was here, so I had to get, you know, get him some beer uh, that he likes. And he likes Coors Light. And now there's Coors Light in my house. And I have to get rid. I can't just throw it away because I'm not going to throw away beer. That's ridiculous. So I have to fucking drink it. Um, but I, I told him the Coors Light joke in the car when we went to to buy it, and uh, and I thought he was going to wet himself, Chris. And I don't know if you've heard the Coors Light joke, but I will. I will throw it to you now before we start the uh, the pod or the uh, the second half of the podcast and and really get into it. What do Coors Light? <clears throat> And having sex in a boat have in common? Um, they'll both make you sick. Mm. They're both fucking close to water. That's <laughs> what they are. And I thought he was going to wet himself. And if you're a beer drinker, that joke's way funnier. Anyway, I fully support your uh, just wing it plan. Love that plan. Happy to be a part of it. I forgot a. Uh... Metacritic changed all their shit around, remember? It's like... Yeah, unusable now. Now we've got this weird bastards. year slider at the bottom. Oh, oh. Let's see if I can... Let me see if I can't figure this out. Let's see if we can't get me to... It's like, things change a little bit when I move it around. This is so fucking stupid. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. So, like, there's this release year slider. 1910 to 2023. And uh, oh, yeah. I saw um, all those fucking classic games that came out in 1910. <laughs> so I'm, I'm moving it around, but it's not doing anything. It's not changing anything. What if I click yeah, on it's that? Weird. It says release here. Perhaps, perhaps that is something that we will endeavor uh, to do at some point and just like make it available for everyone else. Is like there's got to be there's got to be a better way. No, there was a great it's way seen, on uh on on, on Metacritic but, not that long but ago. But it, it just it seems like it should be a relatively simple thing to be able to pull up a list of games that came out in October of twenty thirteen. Yeah, that, that's every game usually that came out pretty October easy. 2013. Yeah. At like you like ten years ago we, we can get some pretty accurate shit. But like even going back to like fucking twenty years ago, it starts to get all all jumbly and shit. It's yeah. just it's a it's very odd that we don't know when shit came out. Yeah. That well, just seems weird to me. I concur, sir. Alright, so we're gonna start with PlayStation three. Uh since uh this is all segmented. We're going to start with the. Uh, we're going to start with what A through C. I think is a uh, what we got here up first. <laughs> so all let's right. see. We've got oh, boy, a bunch of bunch of garbage, just like a uh, <laughs> just like we always bunch of hot garbage. Battle Battle of Tiles EX Cabela's African Adventure Adventures Alien Rage Beer Pong. Okay, Batman <laughs> Arkham Origins. Now we're now we're on to something. Now we've got uh, that, something. That game's here. fucking dope. That was Arkham originally uh, PSP. Um, that eventually got brought to uh, brought to consoles. That's like a fucking straight up Metroidvania too. Is it? Huh. Is it? If it's the one I'm thinking of, the PSP one, I might be thinking. Of, or is Origins? Wait, is Origins the collection of? I fucking forget. Let's see. give me some more information. I'm talking out of my ass right now, Chris. This was never on PSP. This is PS3, Wii U, Windows, and Xbox 360. This is the... It's the follow-up to Arkham City. It's the third main installment in the Arkham series. That's Arkham Knight, isn't it? No, mm, well, it's not, the not fuck according is to Arkham Wikipedia. Origins? The fuck do I... I missed something. All right. I'll shut up, then. <laughs> Arkham Knight. Let's see. Batman Arkham Knight was... The follow-up to Arkham Origins. Oh. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it is the successor to Arkham Origins and a direct sequel to Arkham City. And the huh. fourth main installment in the Batman Arkham series. I don't know how I missed this one. I do not <laughs> think I've played this one. <laughs> I mean, I remember this one. I remember this cover and was this cover art and everything. 
Was this a physical game? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, my whole world has just been thrown <laughs> topsy <laughs> just completely upside down face, Chris. Oh, well, Arkham Origins Blackgate. That's the one I'm thinking of. That's the, the Vita uh, 3DS one. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Okay. Fuck, man. Is this a good game? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. I take it off back. I remember hearing this was not as good as the first two. Okay. I can't I can't say that with authority. What was the uh, what were the reviews on this sucker? Son of a bitch. Yeah, reception on this one was like uh, 76 out of 100, 68 out of 100. A lot of 7 out of 10 kind of stuff. It was like a huh. bit of a step back. Okay. Not great. Not not terrible by any means, but not, you know, f shit's getting stale. Um, I think the interesting ones to bring up, at least in this little little thing here, we, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, that was the pirate one that people seem to like a whole lot. Oh, and, yeah, uh, that's the one that fucking, where I decided that I hated Assassin's Creed. <laughs> well, because yeah, I was playing... I was playing through that one, and there was a. Uh, it was either that one or three. I don't fucking remember actually, but there was a. Uh, there was a bug that in wh whatever when I was playing through the game, it was within like the first forty five minutes of the game, and you could not get through to this next level without like talking to a guy and getting a key or some shit to like unlock a door, and I found that out. After walking around, I say it was 45 minutes into the game. It's five minutes into the game, but for the next 40 minutes, I walked around trying to figure out how to get through the door that I obviously had to go through. Like, there was just no other way forward. And finally, I looked it up, and it was like, yeah, there's a character right here. You just go talk to him. It's like, well, he's not fucking there. He's just not there. He just never populated in the game. And I was like, well... I'm fucking done with this. <laughs> Never play another Assassin's Creed game. Franchise dead. Done and uh, done. Now we have Beyond Two Souls starring Willem Dafoe and Ellen Page. Mm. Uh, this is another Quantic Dream David Cage joint, so clearly yeah. I don't like <laughs> it. <laughs> Not for you. Not for me. Yeah. Uh, did it, was this... Was this one of those things that the reviews kind of seem to be all over the map on this? It's either people loved it or thought it was astonishingly mediocre. I mean, isn't that just kind of all a Quantic Dreams games, though? Yeah. That's, They're either the for Quantic you Dream. or it's the worst thing ever. We also have Flashback, the uh, remake of Flashback that came out this yeah. month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a new, uh, yet another Disgaea game, Dragon's Crown... Deus Ex Human Revolution, cool. uh, Director's Cut, Invisibles, The Lost Kingdom. My goodness. Uh, NBA 2K14. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pro Foosball? Really? All right. <laughs> you can go pro in foosball? Son Apparently you can. <laughs> what have I been wasting my life for? Clearly, I, there, there were options available to me that I didn't know there were. <laughs> School really doesn't prepare you for shit, does it, Chris? It doesn't. Nobody Son told me I could be a pro foosball player. Bitch. Uh, let's see. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Another another bunch of, like, DLC. Garbo, WWE 2K14. Plankton's mm. Robotic Revenge. SpongeBob game. Skylanders Swap Force. It's like the Three bazillionth Skylanders game. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I I mean, Meh. got L Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate. Yeah, that, that came out on cool. the uh, PlayStation Network. Like, that's a good game. Yeah. That was a pretty solid game. That was the like 3DS that. and PSP, I think, one that was uh, yeah. all upscaled to work on TVs. That's pretty cool. Enslaved is cool. Enslaved Journey to the West. I like that game. The uh, the premium edition came out on uh, Windows and PS3. I don't see October Enslaved 25th. on my PS3 list. Uh, hmm. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at uh, Wikipedia. 
I'm also on Wikipedia, but I'm on the list of PlayStation 3 specific games. You're uh, probably looking at no, all I've... the games that came out. Yes. I'm making right, my see. life more difficult. This enslaved game. Do, do, do. Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Talk to me. This came out... Yeah, that came out on PlayStation 3 in 2010. Oh, well, this is the premium edition. It's the the PC know. version came out in October 2013. Got it. Oh, so the okay. game, yeah. Well, fuck me. Yeah, I don't really pay <laughs> attention to PC. That's why I avoid that specific list because that list puts right what it, like it just picks one of the consoles and says this is the release date. Enjoy. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Never mind then. I'll shut up. <laughs> All right. That's PlayStation Three. Let's look at Xbox 360. Of uh, Xbox 360. Oh, that was the other thing that was uh that made me super happy this uh this this last week. Uh, Matt's going to start re- uh, editing uh, wave back and turning tracks so that I can oh, like, live nice. my life. Because <laughs> I, I I was running into a problem where like my new job doesn't really leave me time to do the podcasting right. as much anymore. Right. And Matt was like, well, "I'll take over editing. I can do that kind of stuff. I'm a sound engineer. Let's do it." Yeah. So, yeah. A big. It's a big happy thing. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Xbox 360, let's see. See, now, see, Xbox 360 is set into two different lists. I can I can mess with two different lists and go to five different lists for all your <laughs> game releases. PlayStation 3. All right, Xbox You're 360 bullshit. games. Released in, the, in North America in October 2013. God damn, there's a lot of Xbox 360 games. Mm. May, August, October. All right, October 2013. What are we cooking with here? We got Ares Extinction Extinction Agenda EX. <laughs> uh, F1, Just Dance, blah, blah, blah. I'm just looking for things that are really worth mentioning here. Uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes is kind of nifty. Uh, Batman yeah, Arkham like Origins again. Mirror of Shadow. Or sorry, Mirror of Fate. Anger Bird Star Wars, Assassin's Creed 4, Battlefield 4. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's it for this I've one. I've never been never been huge on the Battlefield games. Yeah, me neither. They're, they're not like, my, they're my all flavor. Right, you know? I understand why Call of Duty overtook them. You know? Did they did did battle did Battlefield ever were they ever in a position no, to be I'm overtaken? Th- no. What am I thinking? Not Battlefield. What's the other one? Medal of Honor? Yeah, Medal of Honor. Fuck. <laughs> I'm fucking terrible today, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, BHK 14, Skylanders, uh, Rocksmith 2014. Oh, um, which one is this? October 22nd, Activision... Ninja Turtles beat em up. This came out on Xbox? Based on the 2012 series? Why don't I remember this? Yeah, 3DS, um, Wii, and Xbox 360. I don't remember this at all. It's it's in that weird Batman Arkham Origins fucking headspace <laughs> that the game neither was, of us have. The game was given generally unfavorable reviews. <laughs> Uh, well, the yeah. 360 and Wii versions received very bad scores due to poor graphics performance <laughs> and gameplay. Oh, yeah, we're looking at a tw- meta score of 25 out of 100. Ouch. Okay. Guess that's why I didn't really remember that being a thing. Uh, it's not and, what you yeah, want. other than that, it's mostly the same stuff that was on PS3. So, pretty unremarkable month all around for those platforms, I'd say. Yeah, no, not uh, not ideal. Not not bringing me the warm fuzzies to my cold pricklies, as they say. <laughs> uh, so let's go back to the drawing board. We got PS3, we got 360. Let's take a look at all of the Wii U games. What Wii U games came out? List of Wii U games. North America, October 2013. See, this list goes by way faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although it does seem like there's a pretty this was a pretty beefy month. Oh boy, okay. Right off the bat, we've got TNT Racers Nitro Machines Edition. No, I'm just kidding. Right after that, the uh, October 4th, 2013 was the Wind Waker HD. Phenomenal yeah, release. 
That's pretty great. God, that game was good. God, that was good. All right, so that's that's a big win. Uh, just Lit, Just Dance, Wipeout, Skylanders, Mighty Switch Force 2 is pretty cool. Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Director's Cut, more Just Dance, Lego, Marvel Super Heroes, Sonic Lost World. That was actually a pretty solid 3D Sonic game, uh, which is not a sentence that I say often. <laughs> I don't really enjoy 3D Sonics, but that was a uh, that was a uh, what little I played of it was okay. That had that really cool Zelda DLC level where Sonic oh, ran yeah. around in a Link hat, and like that was pretty weird. Yeah, that is weird. That's cool though. Uh, like I like that yeah. that happened. I liked it. I like it too. That that was a fun. That was a fun and unique game. But like all 3D Sonic or like all Sonic games in general, I wish they had more time to put into it. You know, I just wish. Yeah. I wish someone would make a Sonic game with the level of polish I just saw in Mario Wonder, you know? Because it could yeah. be great. Uh, that SpongeBob game, the Arkham Origins, also on Wii U. Oh, Wii Party U came out, too. That's Yuck. actually a really fun game. Yuck. Terrible presentation. Just really don't care for the presentation at all. But the actual mini games themselves are pretty fun. I've, I've had some genuinely fun party experiences with Wii Party U. Uh, and again, that the, everything else is pretty much the same stuff we're seeing elsewhere. Black Black Flag, uh, Pac-Man, the Ghostly Adventures. That was actually a really solid month for Wii U. Look at that. That is, yeah. It was maintained some pretty decent parity with the other platforms and had uh, Sonic and Zelda as exclusives. That's that's pretty yeah. big. And Wii Party. You know, not, you know, not that everyone cares about that, but it was fairly decent we seller do, for that platform. We do indeed party. We do. We party you. Terrible name. <laughs> oh, Decent God, game though. Fun party game. Real Okay. Bad. Good good for you, Wii U. Having a solid yeah. month there. How about uh how about we? This is this has gotta be good, right? Cause we in in two thousand thirteen has gotta be just the dregs of humanity at this point. I must I I have to I have to assume. One Let's would see imagine. what else is what else is being farted out for Wii? Anything in, in <laughs> October 2013? Look at this. We got Probably we got a some. soccer game. We got Just Dance Kids. We got SpongeBob. Oh, there you go. We have that terrible Ninja Turtles game. Angry Birds Star Wars. Monster High 13 Wishes. And that's it. Mm. Way to still be a game system. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> way to still exist. Goodness gracious me. Yeesh. Yeah, not worth writing home about. How about the DS? How about the DS? List of DS games. <clears throat> I did mean list of DS games. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> uh, now, here, here we get one of these lists that I don't really enjoy looking at. So let's see if I can't. Ugh. Yeah, yeah this I hate is awful. With, the, uh, with the check. The check mark marks thing. because they're not really going to give me only North American release dates. Anything that came out in Japan first is going to have the Japanese release date written, so I can't get a good picture of when these came out in North America. Let's see if I can find a better list. See, and this is the shit I'm talking about. Like, why is it different? Why is this what the so... fuck, Wikipedia? You difficult. giantly, massively successful website that doesn't need my fucking opinion at all? <laughs> Fix your shit. Okay, let's see. DS 2013. Release date. October 2013. All right, got one. Thank you, uh, Nintendo.fandom.com. Uh, uh, DS Spongebob Pinkalicious Silverlicious I didn't know they made a video game out of that uh, I don't Doodle, even know what that is some, some really obnoxious book my daughter used to read Doodle okay. Jump Journey and Monster High 13 Wishes Oof That's not great Outstanding Can you believe not Wii great. U is our big winner so far <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I mean Yeah October is kind of shitty. Everybody, you're waiting for the holiday games. They usually hit in November. And yet, you know, here like we are it, in it, October with a dual release of Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. 
and yeah, earlier this fair. week was a pretty darn good Sonic game. Like this October has been kind of an outlier. Yeah, Ten years ago, it really has. Ten years ago, not so much. I'm looking for twenty. Ten years ago was on brand. Mm-hmm. All right, 3ds. We got Etrian Odyssey, Rune Factory Four. Uh, oh, Travel Adventures with Hello Kitty, Family Bowling 3D. Fuck yeah! <laughs> oh, Picross E3. Always happy to see Picross. Uh, oh, Pokemon X and Y. There you go. People liked those ones. Um, I mean, it it said Pokemon. It sold. True, but this was one of those like Pokemon games that was like people didn't reluctantly buy. It was like obviously it, there's it, the pe- Pokemon fans who don't care, but they're like, oh, these are sure. actually really good. I think I think is X that the one that had like the weird fucking stag looking yeah. thing on the front of it? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Skylander, it's just like a bunch of shovelware nonsense. Marvel, yeah. Lego Marvel superheroes. That shitty Ninja Turtles game. Oh my god, Phoenix Wright Ice and Tiny Dual Destinies. That's a good one. That's a dope game. All the Phoenix Wrights are, are Doodle cool. Doodle Jump. Though. Regular show. This regular why, show game. What? Why did There's you make a regular else? show game? Why? I think... No, Who's I actually think for? this... I think this one was actually supposed to be good. This is a way forward game. Uh, this even is still... Mordecai and Rigby in 8-Bit Land. I think this is like a... Yeah, some play... The mixed reviews. All right. Never mind. Yeah, I, ju- I just don't know who that's for. Not Fans, not that, fans of regular that, show, I guess? But even, but even them. Like, regular show is great. But there's not a video game there. Clearly there was. Be, I mean, there's... Hmm. There was a game, but it's just, that's a weird thing to make a game out of, I feel. So, I'm going to say, uh, you know, this is a pretty solid month for 3DS. Uh, between Sonic Lost World, um, what was it, the Batman Arkham, or- Arkham Origins, Black Gate, Phoenix Wright, and Pokemon. I think yeah, that's uh, pretty big. That's pretty big. That's a good month for 3DS. So, 3DS and Wii U, really, uh... Really firing, uh, firing off some shots there. Not looking so Killing bad. It. There were no PSP games. Uh, how about Vita? I'm out. I, I, I don't have a good feeling about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, really? Vita games are going to be a fucking problem because they have them arranged... On one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different spreadsheets on fucking Wikipedia. Yeah, no, that's easy. Only eight? How? Seriously, there are just so many goddamn Vita games. It's ridiculous. No, there really aren't. This, these aren't very big lists. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I hate you. 2013. Where's October 2013? Uh, first game. Die, die, die. All right. <laughs> Atomic Dinches, Angry Birds Trilogy. There's the Arkham Origins Black Gate. That's pretty cool. Angry Birds Trilogy and Angry Birds Star Wars both came out on PSP. Uh, sorry, on PlayStation Vita this month. Hmm. Uh, e through H. Where is E through H? Okay. Oh, give me something good here. Come on. Give me October 2013. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give Jimmy Woods. Uh, Show me potato salad. Furmans. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> that's that's Furmans. the end of that sentence? Okay. That's the, that is all I have to say. This is the name of a game that was released on the PlayStation Vita in October 2013. Was, wasn't that like a, like a little fucking toy line or something? Oh, I don't. Could be. F-U-R-M-I-N-S? Yep. M-I-N-S? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm really going to go through all these spreadsheets, aren't I? Yeah. I really don't want to. I really don't want to. You shouldn't. Is I don't there, think you're going to get anything worth it. How about PlayStation Vita? How about this this thing? PushSquare.com. You got PushSquare is usually me? pretty good. Eh, it's not organized all that well. PlayStation no. Vita. Mm. Oh, by release back, date. Then. Okay. Never mind. Back in. See, I knew what I was talking about. 
Okay, let's see if I can get to October 2013 in a reasonable... <laughs> August 2013. Uh, are we going up or down? May. All right, August. October 2013. Yeah, sure. This will work. This will work. I can, I can fuck with this. Let's see. Worms Revolution Extreme. Valhalla Knights 3. Black Ar- Arkham Origins Blackgate. Angry Birds, Furmans, and now we're in uh, November. Okay, all well, right. that was certainly worth all the effort. <laughs> Still one more, right? What else have I got? Ouya! Give me the list of Ouya games. What came out? Release date: October 2013. Oh my God, we got a big, we got a beefy list here, Dan. All right, we've got AVP Evolution. Bomb okay. Ball, Chrono Blade Demo, Drawing Universe, Hero of Many, Ice Rage, Matilda Castilla, Open Arena, Reaper, Samuel HD, <laughs> Oraquan <laughs> Masters 3 HD, and Fist of Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad awesome. that happened. That's the best video game title I've <laughs> ever heard. Well, I do think it is safe to say that 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 was, that that was month, my nickname in high school. That month belonged to the Ouya, hands down. <laughs> Nothing on that. Right. Fist of awesome. <laughs> no, that was that, that's, sorry. It's just bringing back terrible memories because you know it wasn't like the fist of Austin awesome, awesome was voluntary. No, no, it definitely wasn't. But boy, were you happy afterwards. Was I, though? Those weren't <laughs> tears never, of joy, Dan. I never heard any complaints. Okay, let's head back. <laughs> Good God. This you didn't hear awesome. him because you weren't listening. Nope. I was already out the door. I was already zipped up and ready to go. Oh, man. What a fucking name. Mm. All right, yeah, Moby Games is going to be completely useless on this on this front. See, I'm I'm on list of PlayStation 2 games. All right, that's only okay. two lists on uh, on Wikipedia. A through K and then L through Z. All right. Let's do this. Wow, ah, fuck, it's another one of those it. stupid checkmark ones. This is useless to me. Uh, somebody's got to have a good Maybe you should pre-plan these. I forgot that this is what was fucked up. There's got to be something here. Metacritic, how dare you? Why did you change everything? PS2 master list on Giant Bomb? No, that's not going to do what I want. That's what she said. Just an alphabetical list of PS2 games on PlayStation Wiki. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what to do about this. I, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a solution for this. There just doesn't seem to be a good way of finding out the uh, actual North American release dates for all these uh, PS2 games. I mean, it's probably not a ton. Oh God, I hate this. <laughs> God, there are so I mean- many PS2 games. How is there just not like a simple skew list of like everything that came out? All right, let's see. Listchallenges.com. All North American release PS2 games. Can't arrange them by release date, so that doesn't help me. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I got nothing here. I have nothing of value. Sega Retro. That doesn't even make any sense. Why does Sega Retro I, have a list of PS2 games? But okay. On releases, releases.com says that Jack 2 came out on the PS2 on October 14th, 20 years ago. Wow. Uh, let's see. 2003. So I got that. On 2003, yeah, I don't, I, it's not listed on Sega Retro, I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. 
Let's go back to Wikipedia. Let's see what you have to say about Jack 3. Let's see if we can use this as a reference point. Jack okay. 3 was released in North America on November 9th, 2004. <laughs> nope. All right, then. <sighs> okay. Okay. Moby Games, what do you got for me? Jack 3. Did Moby Games agree with you? Yeah, November 9th, 2004. Okay. So that's right, a... Well, fuck me. Yeah, this is, like, impossible. Yeah, like, I, 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 I'm not going to go through each individual, uh... Um, Games came out at some point. This is really there were sad. Games. Yeah. Like, the PlayStation 2 library is... I mean, obviously, it's cataloged. This is not cataloged in a useful way. Um... I wonder if there's a way to do this. Um... This day. That's interesting. Um, hold on. I'm wondering if there's a way that I can make Moby Games work for me. Where was that search I did? List of PlayStation 2 games. Launch games. Have fun editing all this out, Evan. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> because I feel like PS2 is one of those categories we really should hit. List of all PS2 games yeah. released. Let's see. Can I just go to 2013? There are four PlayStation 2 games in 2013. Huh. I guess that seems right, because we're in the PS3 era. So, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what months they were in. It just says it just breaks them down by year. That doesn't really help me here. I need to be able to go further. It looks yeah, like... Games does not help me. All right. So, on, I'm on Metacritic. Um, it looks like on, in 2013, Dawn 2, the game, was February... Final Fantasy on in March, FIFA in September, and Pro Evo 14 in November. So it doesn't look like there were any. Okay. So I had it. I had it written down that there was. I had it written that there were no PlayStation One games, but there was something on PlayStation Two, and then Metacritic fucking changed everything. Yeah. I wish There's, I could figure out this year slider thing. Yeah. Like, it just keeps... Every time I'm moving around, it's like, nope, now there's nothing. Now it's giving me, like, there were no games released ever. That doesn't help me at all. And I think fucking Metacritic. Probably, oh, no. What's the... Uh, oh, all right, so hold on. What's the uh, the next system you want to do? So. All right, so hold on. Let me let me let me. Yeah, no, we're in the hate. No, we're not in. We're in 2003, so we're not in the yeah. next year's system. We're in PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. So this should be. We should be looking at like a pretty sizable chunk of games here. All right, so hold on. Let me let me let me check something here. So I'm on Reddit. If I go to Xbox, um. No, I just want to search. I don't want to make a post. Um, let me see. Game release dates. Uh, no, that's not fucking helpful. Because, like, there... I feel like Reddit is definitely going to be the place where it's like, oh, yeah, I got a link to that, like, right here. You know? Xbox games. Yeah, see, like, if I, could, if I could scroll through these pages on Metacritic better, that'd be great, but I can't. So I gotta go page by page, and I'm, like, in 2007. Uh, true... No, that's 2023. Why? No. Give me 2003. That's what I searched for. Ooh, that's too many zeros. Hold on. Maybe <laughs> that'll help. Um... 
It's Wikipedia releases. Let me see if I can hold on. Down to 2006. See if I can get to 2003 before you do. Maybe. No, Reddit's not helpful there. God damn it. If I could just scroll more than one page at a time, that would be great. Yeah. Fucking Metacritic, they just completely borked this, and I don't know how they did this so bad. Like, I can do 64, 65, 66, or go all the way to 188. I need the ones that are in between. I need to go to, like, give me, like, page 100 or something. Like, Can't you just go up into the address bar and just, like, guess? Like, type it in and try to get a little closer instead of going page by page? Because, like, usually the last oh. bit of the address bar is the page oh. number. Oh, you're a genius. I didn't think about that. I know. It's on page 100. All right, I'm in 2004. We're looking for 2003, right? 2003, yeah. So let's go to one... Uh, so like page 80. 110. August 2004, all right. How about 120? March 2004. All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go manual because we're almost there. Yeah, go to like... Go to... I would say go to 200. February, January... December 2003, November, we're almost there. Wow, Jesus Christ, November, settle the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in October. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm scrolling past some real winners here. All right, October okay. 2003 for PlayStation 2. All right, you, you, that, you figuring out that page number thing really, really, uh, Really change things. All right. Metacritic is yeah. now semi-useful again. PlayStation 2, we've got Freedom Fighters, uh, Energy Air Force. Jeez, geez, what the hell? <laughs> I've never even heard. What is Jisen Patchy Slot? And like, I'm looking at it like, oh, that's got to be a Japan game. No, it looks like it had a North American release. Whatever. Uh, Wallace and Gromit, Backyard Wrestling. Ugh. Don't try this Ugh. at home. Conflict Desert Storm 2. This is PlayStation or Xbox? PS2. Okay. Interlude. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, mm. DDR Extreme. Virtual on Cyber Troopers was kind of neat. Mega Man X7. Mm, that's good. Not like not that. a spectacular game, but uh, not... But I do was, like it. Yeah, I like it okay. I like it okay. Uh, let's, let's keep, keep it live 2004. There's Jack two came out in October, 2003. That's what I said. You said, no, you said, you said Jack three. No, I said Jack two. I could swear you said Jack three. I might've, <laughs> uh, Disney's haunted <laughs> mansion from the last time they made that into a movie tack and the power of Juju Batman rise of sin Tzu. That was actually okay. I think remember that one being okay. Um, the Rise of Sins. Hold on. Which one? That was the oh, was that? animated series looking one. It wasn't Dark Tomorrow, and it wasn't the one with the... It wasn't Vengeance. Um, uh, I feel I, like I remember I this one being I think that okay. Rise of Sinzu one sucked, actually. It's got a 63 Metacore, Metascore, eh, so it's not, yeah. not terrible. The, the first say, okay. one that came out like that, the... the what, what Batman was that? Vengeance. Vengeance. Yeah. That one was I, also not great, but I really liked it. <laughs> I'll tell you what is great. Like, what is great is SSX3. Oh, that's such yeah. a good fucking game. Oh, see, oh, I'm looking at other good ones here. Okay, PS2 is looking like it's picking up some steam. All right, Jack 2 is a winner. SSX3. Um, what is this Grand Theft Auto game that's on here? This is a... Uh, oh, this is Double Pack. Who cares about that? Uh, fucking Castlevania Lament of Innocence was in, in October 2003. That was great. Uh, the Ninja Turtles... Um, 2003 is just called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles based on that uh, that animated series, the 2003 series, which was pretty... It was pretty solid. It wasn't amazing, but it was pretty okay. Um, boy, what else we got? Uh, Tycho Drum Master game came out on PS2 this month. Uh, nice. Uh, I remember people liking Kill Switch okay. Um, Tony Hawk's Underground. 
Uh, SmackDown versus uh, SmackDown. Here comes the pain was the wrestling game of this year. And that appears to be about it. Yeah, Here Comes into... the Pain is like one of the most beloved fucking wrestling games. That mm-hmm. game's crazy. People go nuts for that shit. I remember it selling extremely well, but okay, that's not a terrible PS. That's not a terrible month for the old PlayStation there. No. Not at all. I mean, it was it was the it was the king of the at this particular time. I it it was just like, man, it's just so interesting to to think back to how fucking huge that shit was. Right, the PS2 was just everywhere. I was just fucking crazy. So, what were the ones? I have Lament of Innocence, uh, that wrestling game, um. Jack 2, and uh, SSX 3. Solid month. Yeah, it's a really good fucking month. Yeah. Let's see how the old really, Xbox... Really how the Xbox compete? Uh, with Freedom Fighters, same thing. Oh, Outlaw Volleyball. volleyball bleh. Uh, Backyard <laughs> Wrestling again. Xbox Music Mixer. Celebrity Deathmatch. So, you know, all the same shovelware for the most part. They also got yeah. SSX 3 on Xbox. Oh, shit, Crimson Skies was this month. Crimson Skies. Oh, fuck me. God damn it, I love that game. I fucking love that game so much. Grabbed by the Ghoulies was also this month. First (laughs) post-Nintendo Rare game. I don't love that one. Tony Hawk's Undergrounds, the Ninja Turtles one, Amped 2. Like, you gotta look at Amped 2 and be like, what the fuck were you thinking? Xbox Sports yeah. Network releasing Amp 2 at the sa- in the same month as SSX3. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't need yeah. two new snowboarding games in the same month, Microsoft. Come on now. Especially when one of them is Amp 2. <laughs> exactly. Oh, but Top Spin Tennis came out. I remember that one being pretty solid. It wasn't quite virtual yeah. tennis, but it was also pretty pretty good. Um, GTA 3 came. GTA 3 and Vice City came to Xbox this month. Which is um, huge. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. So, yeah, good month for Xbox. Good, good, good. All right, how about GameCube? How about the old GameCube? The old Cuba games. Let's see if the GameCube can keep up this... Uh, all right, the, uh, the spreadsheet on Wikipedia is actually functional. Let's see if you can keep up this quality. Nintendo definitely took it on the 10. Let's see if they can uh, hold up on the 20. October, here we are. Freedom Fighters, Fighters, oh shit, Beautiful Joe. Mm, God, I love that game, One too. of my favorites, damn, what a good game. Followed by the very much beloved Kirby Air Ride, which I never got into, but people love that game. Do they? Uh, they really do, yeah. Also, oh Jesus Christ, SSX3 was also on here, so was Rogue Squadron 3. The, in my opinion, the weakest of the Rogue Squadron games, but still a sure. damn good game. Sure. Tony Hawk's Underground, Dragon Ball Z Budokai came over to uh, to, to GameCube. That was pretty fun. Um, Rogue Ops, Roadkill, Frogger the Rescue, Hot Wheels, SpongeBob. Uh, that's about it. With uh, Tony Hawk Underground, SSX3. Yeah, so damn good month. Uh, <sighs> So most of the same like relative hits that were multi platform also hit GameCube, but you also had Beautiful Joe and fucking Rogue Squadron. Like Yeah, like if you if you look damn. at the exclusives that hit this month, you had Crimson Skies, mm-hmm. uh Beautiful Joe and Rogue Squadron and Kirby or Jack Two. Like so really kinda no matter where you were, you got something really fucking cool. Yeah, this was this. The, yeah, this was a. I guess the t- the ten years ago October was the outlier, right? Because we're looking at this October, and it's pretty stacked across all platforms. Like I don't know. I just uh, I always remember October being shitty. And I like guess November it was just kind of like the, the. I don't know. November was like the big big one, but like I think a lot of companies were into getting their games out enough ahead uh, enough ahead of time that it, they would make it on everyone's Christmas lists. But yeah, yeah, that's fair. Hell of a hell of a good month all around. Uh let's keep going uh what else we got? Game Boy Advance. 
Uh, Game Boy Advance for this month. I feel like the Game Boy Advance, um, Game Boy Advance game on Wikipedia is going to be a fucking mess. Mm. List of Game Boy Advance games. Yes, this one's, this one is a fucking disaster. Uh, so let's see if we can't find Game Boy Advance in some other format. Um, uh, the direct link on Metacritic didn't seem to show up anymore. Can I? Is there GBA? Okay, here's GBA. I don't need PS2, just GBA. How many pages we got? We got 69 pages. We're starting at 2007. We need to get to 2003. So let's go to. Let's skip the page 20. Where's 20 put us? 2005. About 30. 2004. Go to uh, 53. Oh, 40 is too far. Uh, so, all right, let's see. 39. We're still in September. October. Here we are. So, let's see. October 2003 for the old Game Boy Advance. Uh, Demi Kids. This is another one of those, like, uh, Pokemon style things that came out with two different versions based on some anime that they really wanted to be the next Pokemon that didn't happen. Uh, Why do backyard. people keep trying to be the Hockey. next Pokemon? Like, just stop. No. Mega Man Zero Two. Oh, I like that game quite a bit. Those Ooh, Mega Man Mario Zero Ad- games, really cool. Uh, Mario Advance Four, Super Mario Bros. Three, one of the stupidest names I've ever heard in my life, but mm-hmm. also a mm-hmm. really, a really interesting port of that game. Those e-reader levels are super fucking good. Uh, Batman Rise of Sin Tzu, Spyro Attack of the Something or other, Tony Hawk's <laughs> Underground, Top Gear Rally, Attack Prince of the Rhinox, of, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. I feel like the Game Boy Advance version of that was pretty cool because it was like a 2D port, like 2D reinterpretation yeah. of that. Uh, and then Ninja Turtles game, which was apparently more decent on Game Boy than it was on the home consoles. And that's about it. Okay, not terrible, but no. not exactly what I'd call great. Not setting my toes to tapping. But Dan, the big news, the big, big news this month, in October 2003, saw the launch of the Nokia N-Gage. Oh, I got one. Yeah, I got one. Side yeah, talking. Sitting, sitting right over there. It's in a bin in my closet, never to be turned on, because who wants to play that thing? No, so I don't know. I was, th- I was thinking about it. I was like, I iPhone 15? I got an N-Gage, though. Yeah. What do you That's, mean? You I, can't, I can't side talk on an iPhone. <laughs> I can't. No, I can't. I've tried. People are like, you got to talk into the fucking thing. I said, I don't even know where the thing is. <laughs> this is. This was the future, and this is the future that I believe in. This is what <laughs> I'm doing. Give me All my right. taco. The launch the launch month of October 2003 for the N-Gage brought us Space Impact Evolution X, Pandemonium, Puyo Pop, Super Monkey Ball, Tom Brader, Sonic N, Puzzle Bobble <laughs> Versus, Toy Hanks Pro Skater, and MLB Slam. I just, every time you say Tom Brader, I have to take a minute and be like, oh no, Tomb Raider. <laughs> I have to like because there could have been a game didn't even on the end game. Toy Hank. No, no, not at all. Uh, but there could have been a game on the on the end gauge called Tom Brader. That there very could much been. could have been a thing. Absolutely, but there wasn't. I uh, mean, it, yeah, it was a very cool idea. The end gauge, like it's a fucking shit design. Yeah, Just, but the concept of having your phone also be like there here we are in two thousand three. Cell phones are coming into their own. And it's like, well, why not make one of them into a genuine game system? Yeah. Like, well that's, I, a, this that's is, a great idea. You know what's a bad is idea is having to right? open up the goddamn entire yeah. phone in order to switch cartridges. Yeah, this was pre iPhone, I believe. Yeah, Ugh. the original the original iPhone was until two thousand seven. Wowzers. So, I mean, we're four years before the original iPhone hits. Like, this is a, it's a good idea, but man, just, 
fuck, dude, like how did some of that stuff get past the design stage? Right? Even the name is cool. N Gage is a pretty decent name for no, a, a good phone name. slash game system. It's Yeah. They had everything except the physical design. They just they just made a phone and then tried to shoehorn the gaming aspect into it. And that yeah. was not a that was not how to do it. Not a not no, a, that, I mean that was there's not worse a- launch lineups, but this yeah. Okay. Well look, October two thousand three was a good was a good month. All in all, PS2, Xbox, and GameCube had really, really solid months. Game Boy Advance was fine. The N-Gage launched, and PlayStation 1 was silent once again, because it was ancient at this point. <sighs> so, let's travel back to 1993. In 1993, in October, in Octubre, as they say in Espanol, uh, Arcade <laughs> saw the release... No, they don't. <laughs> they <laughs> <laughs> What's October in Spanish? I always thought it was Octubre. I don't think it is. I don't think they say it with like a weird Transylvanian accent. Oh, I think they do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you fucking know. <laughs> Look, One I failed Spanish too twice, all right? I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> One of us on the show is Hispanic. Um, And it's not no, the Randazzo. <laughs> No, no, it isn't. It's also, it's, but it is somehow the Ryan, <laughs> which is weird. No, it, it's Octubre, but like, I, I don't know. That was, it was very Transylvanian the way you said it. Said it. Octubre. Yeah, that's the way it fucking came. I was like, that's not it. But all right, it's fine. So in the arcades in October of 1993, we had two two uh, two pretty se- heavy hitters. We had the original Virtua Fighter, and we had Ninja a Baseball Batman. I, I just well fuck. <laughs> God damn it! I was I was standing up to uh, just you know in a little inside baseball here. Uh, I was standing up to readjust, um, and you said Ninja Baseball Batman, and I didn't even readjust. I just sat back down. I just sat right on your balls. <laughs> I did. I just sat right back down. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking that game. I just love that game so much, man. It's just such it's really an cool. interesting, creative, fucking weird-ass game. I feel like it's the type of game that it could probably come out now and do okay, but it was a game that for a very long time could only have come out in the 90s. Oh, sure. You know, like, I, I feel like we've now kind of crossed the line again to, like, super weird shit is okay. But that game coming out in the 90s makes fucking perfect sense. For sure. God damn it, what a good game. It's good. Yeah. And, the other, and Virtual Fighter. And the other one you said is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. It's whatever. Who doesn't I love mean, I like, Virtual I like, Fighter? I like Virtual Fighter, but it I don't think Virtual Fighter was great until Virtual Fighter Two. Like the Virtual first one Fighter was, One was was groundbreaking for a number of reasons, especially as a three D sure. fighting game with the, yeah. the polygons. Like nothing really looked like that back then. That was kind of amazing. <laughs> and the game itself didn't really catch like me. That. Yeah. It it's so not interesting. It did, but it, and it's not it's nowhere near the uh the travesty that is Street Fighter, you know, to Street Fighter 2. Like, the, c- Street Fighter is unplayable. Street Fighter is not shit. a great game. <laughs> no. Not a great it's, game. N- it, it's unplayable. Like, I know people try and they're like, no, you know, if you do the fuck. No, like, no, that game fucking sucks balls. Uh, it, it's it's just wretched. Virtual Fighter is not that. But once you, uh, Virtual Fighter 2, fuck a different animal. Right. Some girl. It's pants. not Ninja Baseball Batman. Still, but what is? God damn it, what a good name. That is up there with oh. Fist of Awesome or who the fuck <laughs> that was. <laughs> Over on the NES, oh, the old Nintendo Entertainment System still kicking with Championship Pool, the video game adaptation of Last Action Hero, Nigel oh. Mansell's World Championship Racing. And Tetris 2, which was actually quite good. Right. I really liked that game. How good is Last Action Hero, though? I, not very, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> not very. Fucking... 
<laughs> a strange question to ask. Like, it's all right. And the movie was memorable, I guess. I, but when fucking when Schwarzenegger walks through the video store and there's uh, whatever the fucking Stallone in the Schwarzenegger movie is, though, and he's, I love his movies. It's so, <laughs> I fucking love it. I was like, oh, I get that joke. It's fucking great. I was so excited when I was 12. I was like, oh, I was fucking meta. I didn't even know what that was. All right. Time to move on to the 16-bit games. Let's see what the Super All Nintendo right. had to offer. There's a lot of Super Nintendo games. I don't know that any of them are good. I'm not seeing any real winners, but let's see. We've got Capcom's MVP Football, which I completely forgot Capcom had ever made an NFL football game before. Yeah, I um, don't know that game at all. Yeah. That's... Death. Somehow I have yeah. continued to miss that as I scroll through the emulation uh, software. Daffy Duck, I'm the sure Marvin Missions, there. Football uh, Fury, uh, uh, The Incredible Crash Dummies, Kendo uh, Rage, Last Action Hero, Lock On, NBA Showdown, NHL 94. Uh, that's, showdown's that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, NBA Showdown was all right. And NHL showdown's 94 right. is a winner. Pack Attack's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, Pack Attack yeah. is that puzzle game one. I like that game yeah. a lot. Paladin's Quest. I've never played it. It's an Enix RPG of some sort. Uh, Ren oh, and Stimpy wow. Vidiots. Sim Ant. Oh, Sunset Riders. I, there you go. Sunset Riders is cool. I feel very similarly to 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 the Ren and Stimpy games as I did to regular show. Like, why why are you making this? It's not good. It's not a good game. Don't do it. The si if the Simpsons couldn't fucking do it, so all of those games were terrible. Like, why do we keep doing this? Except it doesn't the make arcade any sense game. to me, Chris. Well, sure. Are, sure. Yeah. But, but like Bart the versus Simpsons the Space arcade Mutants game is a it's a great game, but it's not a great Simpsons game. You know? No, <laughs> like not at all. Because how do you make a Simpsons video game? <laughs> like, it's a you great don't. beat 'em up, but when you think sure. about the Simpsons as a show, like this doesn't this doesn't really track. <laughs> Not yeah, you know, you remember all those episodes anyway. of Marge just beating the fuck out of people with a vacuum cleaner, just straight beating the bricks off of motherfuckers, just walking down the street. Marge is just so violent. <laughs> what is happening? This is so strange. Well, Sunset Riders is pretty great. That's a that's a yeah, good game. That's cool. Uh, Super Aquatic Game starring James Pond. No, thank you. <laughs> Stop it. Super Stop Empire it. Strikes Back, Trodlers. Oh, I want True that game Golf. to be better than it is. Which one? Em Trodlers? Super yeah. Yes, of oh. course, obviously. <laughs> the concept is so fucking solid. It's just, yeah, I wish I no, liked the Super, Super Star Wars games, back. too. They're not, I, I don't love them. They're okay. You know, they were cool at the time, because, oh, he's got a fucking lightsaber, it's fucking great. Um... It doesn't look like the Atari, so that's cool. But like, but they're just—I—I I don't know. I've I personally, I have never felt that they are very good games. Yeah, they're I agree. Really I, I wish I was a fan, but I'm just not. Yeah, they're really but cheap. Dan, the they next, don't control very well. The next, yeah. the next handful of games here. This is this is a roller coaster ride. Are you ready for this one? Okay, I'm ready. I'm. So, do I need All to right. stand back up and adjust? I think you do. <laughs> We start with <laughs> The Wizard of Oz. When you want to talk Ooh. about why are we making a video game out of this, The yeah. Wizard of Oz, followed why are by we adapting a fucking, at that point, 50-year-old <laughs> fucking movie? For the Super Nintendo. Uh, for the Super by Nintendo. Secret of Mano was next. Oh, that's, well, yeah, that, we're back up. We're back up, and then Arrow the Acrobat. Mm, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, something it's called fine. And then Cliffhanger, one of oh, my most hated games ever. Best game ever made. Love that game. Fuck that game. With, fuck that game with a bag of razor blades. So fuck fight with a helicopter. Fist fight with a helicopter. Fuck that game. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say uh... middling. I mean, I, it's Secret hard to say middling. You got, yeah, Secret of Mana, NHL 94. You yeah, got really, you got some good stuff here. 
but it's drowning in mediocrity <laughs> elsewhere. The, I, that is the perfect way, and this might be sacrilege to say, Chris, anybody who's still listening, I might lose with this comment um, after just some of the hot takes we've had today uh, between Caddyshack and your fucking Mario voice comment. But I feel like that is a perfect way to describe the Super Nintendo library. Some real gems that are drowning in mediocrity. Well, for everything that the Super Nintendo did uh, this month, I feel like it still has a definitive edge over the middling uh, games released for the Genesis. The Genesis got The Addams Family, Boxing Mm. Legends of the Ring, Dinosaurs Mm. for Hire, Gauntlet Uh, 4, Haunting, starring Poltergeist, (laughs) <laughs> All right, land land stalker is pretty cool, but I feel like land that kind of gets cool. that gets canceled out by Secret of Mana. I would say, uh, yeah, for sure. Ranger X, Simpsons, Bart's Nightmare, Super Baseball yeah. 2020, yeah. Wimbledon Championship Tennis, and that's mm. it. Yeah, no, I I will also stand by the uh, the Genesis. Couple of gems drowning in a sea of mediocrity. The 16-bit era is not as good as we remember it to be, Chris. See, I have a I have a pretty big shelf of Super Nintendo games that would beg to differ with that. There are yeah. a lot of Super Nintendo games that I go back to on a regular basis that I think are genuinely oh, there's, there's great. There's a lot of really good stuff. And I would also there's say a, oh that my there's God is there some bad stuff. It's not as bad as it is now. Because there were no digital uh, games back then. There's so much yeah, more shovelware fair. now. That's fair. Meanwhile, yeah. on the Sega CD, we got oh, Joe, well. Mantan- Joe Montana. Uh, NFL- <laughs> Joe Montana. Joe Montana. <laughs> NFL football. <laughs> NFL feet balls. Then we got Joe NFL's Mon- greatest, <laughs> San Francisco first. Joe Montanias. <laughs> Joe Montanias. You know, the fucking actor. He made a football game. It's great. Like, yeah, the Sega CD had three games. Two of them were football games. What the hell? <laughs> he had Joe Montana NFL and NFL's greatest San Francisco versus Dallas, 1978, 1993. And then Sophie. Which is... A- <laughs> <laughs> two football games and a space shooter. Thank you, Sega CD. Two... Two football games a month into the football season, or two months into the football season at that point. That was weird. Very fucking tastic. I don't know. Madden Um, comes out, I think, in January now. What about Turbo CD? Mm. What do you got for us in October of 1993? Anything? We got one. Probably nothing starring Joe Montaigne. Jo- Joe to Montana's Dungeon Explorer 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Super CD-ROM 2 game, Dungeon Explorer 2. I don't know anything about it, no, but that's the thing. Yeah. N- nothing released on Neo Geo, but over on the old CDI, both the uh, Link Faces of Evil <laughs> and Zelda Wanda oh. Gamelon were this month. God damn it. Thank you, CDI, for those particular turds. What a fascinating piece of history those are. Oh, they really are. Somebody should make a video. They're certainly not good, but they are fascinating. Yeah. Let's see. The 3DO. This is interesting. This isn't the 3DO's it's launch. Never, this is. Never the way I want somebody to start a sentence. The 3DO, like, all right, I'm out. So the 3DO launched in this month? It came out. Hold on, know, hold on. There's something launch. There's something weird about the 3DO. Uh, 3DO launch. <laughs> yeah. Everything, I know. Um, yeah, it officially launched in North America in October of 1993, and I believe it only launched with one game. <laughs> Yeah, 3DO, the only 3DO software available at launch was the third-party game Crash and Burn. Panasonic also <laughs> failed to manufacture an ample supply of the console in time for launch day, and as a result, most retail stores only received one or two units. By Good mid-November, God. the 3DO had sold 30,000 units. Ouch. Boy. So yeah, Crash and Burn was the uh, 
can you believe this? What we're talking about console launches, and there was a there was a console launch that was worse than the fucking end gauge. I Damn, just, 3DO. The That's not a great, great start on them <laughs> to ju- to do like delay it a month. Nobody would have noticed. <laughs> would have been fine. Delay. We're gonna fucking. I mean, it wouldn't have been the- fine. <laughs> no, but it would have been, been as would have been better as than it this. was. <laughs> just one fucking game, and it's crash and burn. Fuck is wrong with you people? Ah, oh, let's look at the Game Boy. Game Boy, Buster Brothers, Gearworks, Last Action Hero, Ms. Pac-Man, Popeye Two, The Real Ghostbusters. VDX, Ren and the Stimpy Show, Sports Illustrated Championship Football and Baseball, Tom and Jerry Frantic Antics, We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. I mean, I feel like Miss Pac-Man is just kind of always awesome. Yeah, but it was just... Like, even, was, even bad versions of that game are still yeah. pretty great. It was it was okay on Game Boy. It, I believe it has, still had the whole screen-scrolling issue. Yeah. but how is the uh, How is the Popeye 2? I fucking love that arcade game so much. Yeah, this has nothing to do with that. Okay. The arcade game was a Nintendo-made thing. This is yeah. after Nintendo no longer had the license. So this is some just swill coughed up by Activision. Ugh, that sucks. Yeah. Not a great My, uh, Pen has been getting into Popeye lately, which I fully support. Popeye's fucking great. I it's support it, weird- too, but that's weird. It, isn't it like because I haven't been like pushing it of like, hey, you want to sit down and watch old Popeye cartoons with dad? You know, like that's not it's not a conversation we've had, but like, oh, she got a Popeye shirt and she's I don't know, she's fucking weird. She's like, I need spinach. <laughs> what is happening? Is that of a can cracking it open? Yeah, no, legit. Like I bought Popeye spinach at the store. It's the happiest I've seen her in months. It's like, all right, <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Where are you going? Down to the docks to beat up sailors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fucking good luck. Bring me back a hamburger. <laughs> Be home by 10. <laughs> uh, let's see. So the only thing we got left in this is the, the Game Gear, which had Cool Spot, Star Wars, and The Simpsons, Bart vs. the World. I mean, you love Cool Spot. Yeah, and the Game Gear version is not terrible. I, I mean... Okay. Star Wars is fucking weird, and Bart vs. the World sucks. Uh, but so yeah, bad. it was okay. It was okay. So, all right, not 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 a nightmare scenario for Game Gear. 3DO launch is hilariously bad. Link Face of Evil, Zelda Wand of Gamelon. Uh, fucking two football games and a space shooter for Sega CD. <laughs> and then uh, r- just mountains of mediocrity on Super NES and Genesis with a couple of gems thrown in there. So clearly yeah. the arcade was the winner with Ninja Baseball Batman and Virtua Fighter. Yeah, I, Ninja Baseball Batman wins no matter what. 2003 was ultimately much better than 1993. Let's see if 1983 can make up for it. Uh, in the arcade, we had Elevator Action. Uh, let's see. What a good the- fucking game. Man, I love Elevator Action. That is let's just see. an awesome game. Yeah, Elevator Action's pretty cool. I love it's Elevator Action. I love all the, the reboots they've done of it. Like, it's just such a simple, fun concept. It's good stuff. All right. The Atari VCS 2600, 1983, October. We're looking at the uh, the trackball controller was released. Chase the Chuck Wagon. Dig Dug. What a great port of Dig Dug. Mm. Uh, Activision's Frostbite. Gravatar, Joust was another really good yeah. Atari port. Moon Patrol was surprisingly good for the 2600. Laser Gates, Party Mix, Pressure Cooker, Red Sea Crossing, Springer, Star Trek, Return of the Jedi, Death Star Battle, Sword Quest, Waterworld, and Time Pilot. That's, yeah, that's pretty, pretty fucking solid. solid. Yeah. That's pretty good. Just Dig Dug and Joust alone were just, hmm. I really like I have, Moon Patrol, I, too. Thumbs up. I am just the drizzling shits at Joust. I have never <laughs> been any fucking good at it. I, 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 I can't fucking, I can't wrap my head around it. 
I can't make it work. I know what I'm. I know what I'm supposed to do. It just it just won't do it. It's supposed to not suck. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Odyssey that two. All? All right. That's it. That's Odyssey fuck. two actually had a That's release this month. In o- October eighty three. Odyssey two saw a game called Power Lords. You ever play Power Lords for Odyssey two, Dan? <laughs> I have. I no. <laughs> I have not actually. What does this game look like? It sounds like a fucking just awful, awful. There's some sort of snake? early '80s sci-fi barbarian shit. It looks like there's like a helicopter shooting a snake oh, during what? a meteor shower. Nope, that's not what I, I saw. N- in I have no clue my what's mental movie here. was very different. This is fucking bananas. I don't know what this is. I'm glad it's here, but I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what to make of this. This is a very strange experience I'm having right now. <laughs> wow, the Odyssey I, Two is definitely a, a game system that I. I don't have. I just don't have an understanding of its library. Yeah, I'm clearly missing stuff. Clearly missing something here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back. Missing is maybe a strong word. I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what am I doing? In television. What about the old in television? What was Tommy Tallarico doing in 1983? <laughs> Being a cunt somewhere. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, September, October. Who advanced Dungeons and Dragons? Treasure of Tarmin. Donkey Kong Jr., Fat Hom, Motocross, Pinball, <laughs> and Worm Womper. All right, what was the Donkey Kong Jr. port for in television like? This I gotta say. I'm go- I'm gonna guess it was okay. I'm gonna guess it was unplayable on that freaking controller. Mm. Well, yeah, that's probably true. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna say tolerable. <laughs> Okay, that's better than than. I yeah. mean, look, it does. It looks better than twenty six hundred flavored one. It still strikes me as the kind of game that probably shouldn't have been ported to Intellivision. Yeah, because well. yikes. <laughs> yeah, that gets a big old bag of yikes. Nah. <laughs> nope. Atari fifty two hundred. You getting games at eighty three? Sure, you are. Let's see, eighty. Four, where's 83? Uh, October 1983. Oh, wow, actually a bunch of games. Uh, we got Astro Chase, Blueprint, uh, Dig Dug, Gorf. Gorf is great. I don't know how it is on 5200, Gorf. but I'll check that out. How was Gorf on 5200? Uh, Joust, Crazy Shootout, Mountain King, Qbert, Real Sports Baseball, Star Trek, Vanguard, Wizard, Wizard of War. So, you know, in retrospect, seems like a pretty solid lineup, except that we were in a period of time when home consoles just getting, like, the latest and greatest arcade hits was, like, already kind of played out. So yeah. uh, the 2600 could get away with that. But 5200 being the system's successor, like, probably looking for something a little bit better than half-assed arcade ports. Though something I have to say, little, Gorf uh, looks pretty good on A little bit more here. substantial, yeah. Gorf does look pretty okay on 5200, so... I don't know. How about the Coleco? How about the ColecoVision? What's the ColecoVision given us in 1983, in October of 1983? Two... Here's 83... August, October. Another pretty beefy month. Fathom, Frogger, Omega Race... Rocky, Slither, Subrock, Victory, and War Room. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Hmm. Not the All best right. month for Coleco, but not bad. No. And how about the Vectrex? Do you Vectrex have anything in October? Uh, the Light Pen, Art Master, and Spike and Star Castle. All right. The light pen's pretty I'll, cool. Like it's just an I'll interesting I piece of tag. Of um, I know the light pen, uh, art master game. Other than that, I don't really know them. 
And the only other thing to talk about is the Game & Watch got Lifeboat and Donkey Kong Jr., and that's it. That's the 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, we did it. Tw- yeah, we did it. Tw- so 83 was pretty pretty solid all around. 93 was pretty subpar. 2003 was fucking great. And 2013 was also subpar. So, And 2023 yeah. is a fucking masterpiece. So, wild. That's it. Yeah. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. <laughs> Fucking dog woke me up at three o'clock in the morning eating butt scratches again. Like it's Ugh. I need a good I just need a good night's sleep. Tiff did that dog. to me. <laughs> Scratch my ass. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. That's our show, everyone. Join us next week and we'll be bringing you our penultimate starter kit. We're almost done with the starter kits, Dan. We're on PlayStation 4. Until we 4. get talked into more of them. Yeah, until we get to... For, like, what else? We already did them all. No other uh, well, systems we to do. We didn't do the N-Gage. We didn't do the 3DO. We didn't You're do right. the television. And we're not gonna. Uh, we might. I don't know. You might. What you, do the you listeners do it without want? Me. Have fun. <laughs> no. I've done podcasts without you. It doesn't go well. It just turns <laughs> into like fucking weird masturbation jokes. It's, it's very strange when you're not here. As opposed to those normal masturbation jokes. <laughs> Some of them are. You know. It's very pleasant, Phil. I just keep fucking wiping this spot on the counter until you show up. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. Stop fucking All right. yawning. God damn it. I can't. You're so unprofessional. I, if I could, I would. Drink coffee. You're a fucking adult. Not at midnight. It's 11.55. I'm ready for bed. Is it? That's not even midnight, you puss. <laughs> I got five minutes a day left. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do the PlayStation 4 starter kit. That's a thing that's going to happen, whether you like it or not. We're on most yeah. social media platforms. I'm, if you want to get in touch I am with interested us. to see how it's going to go. I am, too. I don't really know what the physical PS4 library is like these days. But anyway, if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes. You'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ollie. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That is it, everybody. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>